All right, y'all. Welcome to the show. We've got a gigantic one for you today. It is. It is it. 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 The final Oscar winner predictions. Uh, it's like uh, the quote from everything everywhere all at once last year when Wayman said every everything is, I forget the exact quote everything in your life has led to this moment uh, yeah this is this is really it now of course I'm George but I only have a couple I only have two people here who have uh, uh, who, who are here to join me today uh, I've got uh, Jasmine. I was going to say two people who have nothing better to do with their Wednesday evenings than spend three hours talking about an award show. And Jared. That, that's dire. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> hello. All right. Is it wrong? I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's just It'll get into hours. it. It'll be four we'll hours. We'll talk about guilds as oh, we go. please don't. <laughs> We will talk about guilds as we as we go. No need to, no need to waste time explaining what happened right before the show. Let's just get into it. Uh, we'll begin with uh, with best live action short film. So for this, we have the after. Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red, White, and Blue, and The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Jasmine, give me your prediction me. and your preference in this category. Um, my prediction is Mr. Wes Anderson will be an Oscar winner for possibly the oddest category that he could win for. Um, I think number two is red, white, and blue, just because it is very topical. Um, if enough filters go, we don't want to give Wes Anderson an award for a category that is normally designated for smaller up and coming filmmakers. Um, but I think there'll be enough people that just see the Wes Anderson votes on the Wes Anderson. Um, my preference in this category is invincible. I think it is probably the best short of all. 15. I've only seen 12. Okay. It is my favorite. Uh, I, I do want to give credence to the idea that Red, White, and Blue could win. Uh, to be clear, I am not predicting it. Uh, I am predicting the Wonderful Story Henry Sugar, which probably would be my preference of these uh, between that and Night of Fortune. I'm going I... pretty safe. I'm going pretty safe with the shorts because I find that's kind of usually the easiest. It's really hard to predict the shockers in the shorts, I find. There's a chance they see it as important as well, and that's where a lot of these uh, films will win. Is in the short categories, the important, uh, quote unquote, important film, which uh, is what that film would be in the wake of, uh, you know, Roe versus Wade being overturned and all these draconian uh, abortion laws being passed in red states, and it 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 just it feels like it is like a, a movie of the moment in that sense. I think it has a very shocking twist that I don't think is executed very well, but is regardless a uh, one that I think will emotionally affect people who maybe aren't thinking about how executed it was and just think like, oh my God, how shocking, how sad. And uh, that could be... Uh, something they go for, but at the end of the day, I do think it's going to be Henry Sugar. Most likely. So, uh, I, I think it's just like a, it's like a 25% chance, I think, that Red, White, and Blue could happen. Yeah, I don't think any of the others have a chance. Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately for the actor, which is god-awful. God-awful. Not, not good. Uh, I'm not really crazy about Invincible either. I thought it was kind of okay. Uh, but... It's okay being wrong. <laughs> Happens uh, all the time. Uh, not with me, though. I am uh, the most based person here. Uh, I think that of Fortune is really good. I wish I had a better chance of winning. But 
uh, they don't go with films that are not in English most of the time. And yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about it. <laughs> and uh, Jared, I assume you're going with Henry Sugar. Yeah, for sure. Um, it just it's 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 my boy Wes Anderson. So um, I don't know, just popularity might have been might be like just yeah, we'll put Martin Foster of Henry Sugar. Um, but it's not, but. I haven't seen any of the other shorts, so I can't speak on them, but I have heard a lot of Red, White, and Blue, and Invincible being the ones that people seem to like, um, and everyone very much is liking the after, and unfortunately, not a lot about Night of Fortune, so. Well, Anderson's also on Netflix, mm-hmm. which makes it a very easy watch. Unfortunately, so is the after, but. Hopefully yeah. everyone realizes the after is very bad and does not re- reward it. You can easily watch Night of Fortune, though. It's on YouTube, so. All right. Nice. Now we're on to documentary short film. We're up to me for this one. The ABCs of book banning, the Barbara Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, and Nine Nine and White Flow. I, for the longest time, was firmly in the camp of just like ABCs of book banning is not good. It is not well made. It is a middle schoolers PowerPoint presentation. That's an offensive statement to middle schoolers. <laughs> it's middle it's, schoolers can make a better presentation. It is just this. not a good movie, but it's about an, an important topic that people could gravitate towards. And also, it's like one of those catchy titles that wins a lot. But there's a few things that give me a lot of pause with this number one the fact that it is so poorly made like i i have to take back what i said in my letterbox review it's like oh i'm not gonna say it's poorly made like the more i i see i see it and more like think about it because people talk about it like no that movie shit it's so lazy with what it with what it's doing yeah it like a lot of i hear a lot of people saying like that movie is just not well made at all. And that's not even something I heard a lot of people saying about Stranger at the Gate last year, which is a movie a lot of people, including myself, also hated. But I just forgot about the movie until you oh. just mentioned it. A oh my gosh, pe- yeah. A <laughs> lot of George. people like I don't think anyone said that movie was like a poorly made movie, still. And it, it's also it's kind of like a 3.0 in letterbox and like a low IMDB score. Like usually shorts with that low ratings don't win. Even like skin and two distant strangers are like above a seven on IMDB. And ABC's a book banning. Uh let me see what its IMDB score is. 6.3. That's not good. <laughs> and I've heard a lot of people recently talking about how the last repair shop is their favorite because it's it's emotional and people love the stories of the people who work in that in that shop and uh how how much it moved them and how well about how well made that film is it's not my personal favorite in the category but it is a very well made well put together short film and also a story came out recently, I think, during voting about how this place in Los Angeles, where the repair shop is located, this this school, which is like down the street from the Dolby Theater, might I add, is launching a fundraiser to save this repair shop. And the movie is very well liked, and Searchlight is behind it, and they've been pushing it really hard for a very long time. And let me look at its IMDb score, because I actually... Do not yeah, I was gonna know. say. I mean, search that it's been promoted on social media, and it's on Disney Plus and Hulu, and seven point three, which is certainly a lot better than uh, ABC's book banning. And so, in this eleventh hour, I'm actually gonna switch my prediction. I'm gonna predict the last repair shop. A hey, same here. <laughs> now, my preference is not the last repair shop. My preference is actually Nine Nine and Wipeo, which they have really been campaigning that movie disney plus has been getting out the grandmas uh to screenings to the oscar nominees luncheon they're apparently are actually going to be at the oscar ceremony 
as well. And also Sean Wong, the director, is having a bit of a moment. Dee Dee uh, played at Sundance and won the audience prize there. He, for a filmmaker who's not even 30 years old, like he's really having a big moment. And I, I, I think there's a chance that film wins as well. How likely that is, I I don't know, but I I I I do believe that it is in the running, but I am ultimately going to go with the last repair shop because like I, I just can't like it's that story of like saving the repair shop coming out during voting was like I that has to have had something, something of an effect. I think that would be like uh very interesting. All the people saying it's the best. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna switch. I'm staying pessimistic. So you're going with ABC's book banning? Is what you're I am staying pessimistic. <laughs> uh, I mean, it could win, but <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I I can't get pessimistic. Nobody likes it, I guess. But then again, I might be going against that in a, in a different short category. Like I definitely, um, I definitely think. That Lash Repair Shop could win. I don't know if 99 White Pill can win. Um, I haven't seen it. I've actually only seen two shots in this category. This is the category I've actually seen the least in. I've only seen Lash Repair Shop and ABC of Book Banning. Um, I do know that 99 White Pill is on uh, Disney Plus, like Hulu, uh, and stuff. Everyone I know is like very 50 50 on that movie. <laughs> like some people really love it, and some people literally is, are, are the it's just a home movie. That was submitted for an they author. have no heart they have but, no um, heart have some heart for the farting grandmas <laughs> which i'm really really interested to see kind of how i feel about it because i was to complain about like how do you measure a year from like last year um this is much year. better made than that film <laughs> but no i'm going abc's book banning i will stay pessimistic i could change but i'm, I'm staying pessimistic because if i switch and then it goes to ABCs of book banning, I will be kicking myself. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. All right, well, let's get to animated short film, where I might go against that logic that I just used. Letter to a Pig, 95 Cent says, Our Uniform, Pachyderm, and The War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Jared, where are you going with this? Um, I honestly, <laughs> I don't, no, um, because I know everyone loves 95 senses and that's like the best and war is over is the worst. But oh, Gold Lord Derby Lord. has letter to a pig at number oh one. God. So it's, I put is, that as my number uh, one. It's not winning. They have it's it not winning, at number, okay. they have it at number one because it has it's about the Holocaust, but it's way too abstract. It is way too abstract to win, in my opinion. Also, I should, I put, should I put 95 senses? No, go with War is Over. No, oh, yeah. Also, no. War is Over Carson. specifically inspired by the music of John Lennon and Yoko Yoga specifically because it has that as well. Let me say this also about that. Letter to a Pig. And this also applies to our uniform, Pachyderm, which, like, I think everyone agrees, like, those aren't winning. It's not in English. Like, it's in a foreign language. There has never been a winner in the animated short category specifically that is that is not either English language or no dialogue. The only films here that fit that criteria are 95 Senses and War is Over. And I also yeah, I, agree with Jasmine. Letter to a Pig is like too abstract. abstract. I think people just have it at number one because they know it's about the Holocaust, but they haven't seen it. But it is about the Holocaust. Um, it's okay. I didn't love it. But its message is so abstract in the way that it like presents it that there's no way it, it would like get enough else in my opinion. No. Yeah. Same, remember... with, uh, Pas same with Pasha Derme. That's very subtle. It's not abstract, but it's very subtle in like its messaging. So that my friend watched it and he did not. The entire message flew straight over his head. <laughs> I had to like tell it to him. <laughs> And our uniform is too simple. It's good, but it only got nominated because of the animation, which is gorgeous. But yes, it, it's very simple, very simple, very small story. I think the whole short is like four minutes. It's really short. So no, I think it'll just be the bad one. <laughs> so he, he, here's the dilemma I'm having. And the, re and the thing is, 
Just go for the bad War's one over. First. It makes just so much sense. It makes so much the, sense because it has John and Yoko one. in the title. And it is emotionally manipulative in the way that the Academy often likes to go in these shorts categories because, oh my god, when, there's that point where that fucking... Uh, the fucking song. The that, that song, like, because, I mean, I'm not, like, super into it. I wasn't super into it even at first when it was just, like, the pigeon delivering the chess moves to everyone. Like, the score is good, sure. The animation's actually kind of impressive there. It's uh, Newman, and right? It's, Thomas Newman? Yeah, it's Newman. But, like, I'm I'm like, okay, this is, like, impressive animation and score, but, like, it's not really affecting me still. But then, you're, so this is Christmas, and I just burst out laughing when that Yes, happened. that is actually like, many of Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Jared, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it, it is the most saccharine <laughs> bullshit I've ever seen in a, in a film. It makes a lot of sense. It but I go on Letterboxd. It's Letterboxd oh is worse than ABC's book banning score. Yeah, because yeah, because of course Letterboxd is gonna like hate it. I'm pretty sure the Academy is gonna fall for it. Well, War's over has the same Letterbox score as ABC's book banning. So Wow, I feel more compelled to predict the ABC's book banning. I feel like a bit of a hypocrite because I use this reasoning against predicting that, and I might be predicting it here. With that being said, 95 Census, which is just the best in this category, I think, easily. Like, absolutely incredible. I have a feeling that that might be like The Ice Virgins, where it's a movie that a lot of has a lot of online passion. And people online really love it. But the industry's like, meh. It should be known. 95 Census does technically have the higher IMDb score. But I still think the Academy is going to go just for the very easy. Uh, I think this is the hardest of the shorts categories to predict, though. Because I do think this is the hardest one. I think it's something that Matt and Evelia said. Is that if the title was just Wars Over... Then maybe 95 Senses would win, but it's the fact that it has inspired by the music of John and Yoko also in the title. Yeah, that's the problem. The, anyone who doesn't watch them and still wants to vote for them for whatever reason, instead of abstaining, they're just going to go for the one that mentions John Lennon and Yoko. That's a very lazy vote. I think even despite my reasoning against predicting ABC's a book banning, I think that's just where I'm going to lean right now. Because it just has that title, but, but, but like... Well, it's actually the lowest IMDb score of all of the shorts. It's the worst film of all the shorts, too. Like, Wars Over is awful. I hated it so much. But here I am predicting it to um, uh, to, to probably win, uh, even despite my reasoning. Be super bug many. But if 95 Senses, or even Letter to a Pig, ends up winning, I'm it's just going to use this role until the end of time. Like, never predict a short film that is below 7 on IMDb. <laughs> I'd be happy if any of them won. I don't know if I'd won Are You From It to Win. The animation for it is go- it is gorgeous animation. Like, I think I it think got nominated for its animation. 95 it's Senses should win. Story. I think that is the clear best to like. It's here. so good. It's so good. And the animation is like all different animation styles. It's, it's so yeah. good. Also, like, just for the fact that the, differ- that the director of Napoleon Dynamite would win an Oscar. Like, that that is funny. But I'm gonna say war is over for now. But God, I don't really feel that great about it. Help you help do it all, Jared. Yeah. So it it, it reminded me to um, Carson Run Run Chris whatever. Um, he did his like what well, he watched in February. And he watched all the Oscar shorts, and he was like, "Yeah, war war is over is like the worst, and that's why it's winning anyway." <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, okay, that's the sentiment. That's okay. <laughs> All right. But I was confused because well, I did hear a lot of people like 95 senses and say it's the best. So I'm like, maybe there's on the goodwill of that getting in. But well, again, I, I, think, to win. Really I kind of feel like it's the iceberg just, it's just maybe has a lot of online passion, but the not much industry passion. Yeah, you because know, I feel like the hatred for war is over is very confined to our sector of the internet right that's that's my fear 
let's move on to an easy category best international feature film wow well, uh, i wonder what's winning here Io capitano the teacher from Italy, perfect days from <laughs> japan society that's no from spain uh das Lehrer zimmer aka the teacher's lounge from germany and the zone of interest from the united kingdom we are up to jasmine here so it's obviously the teacher's lounge obviously <laughs> so of interest go. is obviously not winning here uh no it's uh teacher's lounge very very easy it is the best picture nominee one day it'll be a race in this category because it has not been a race in this category for several years now <laughs> I would love for it to be a race in this category. One day we'll get two Best Picture nominees uh, in this category. France. Tis, tis, tis. Uh, though France was in here, I do think Anatomy was just win. So, um, but no, this is obviously Zone of Interest. Very, very deserved win. Um, I think I've seen... Oh, no, I haven't seen Ayo Capitano, and I haven't seen Society of the Snow, but I liked Perfect Days. Um, I liked Teacher's Lounge. I didn't love Teacher's Lounge. I don't know how I felt about the ending of Teacher's Lounge. A lot of how did you don't. feel about the what did you feel about the ending of Teacher's Lounge? Because I know you've seen it as well. Uh it's 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 interesting. <laughs> I'm not I think I think it's a good ending. I think I I whether or not it fully works, um I'm not entirely sure. It was added to my list but... of films that still make me not want children because they are annoying. Yeah. <laughs> uh um no yeah it's the zone of interest um yeah. one of the easiest some, categories of them, I argue. some people on the internet are going to look at society this no winning at mpsc in the international category over zone of interest and say oh what if that's something no zone of interest is the best picture nominee <laughs> oh it's the best it, picture nominee in this category it, since... it, also mpsc in that category goes off the beaten path pretty often what was the last time there wasn't a like, best picture nominee in this category the last time there wasn't oh it was 2020 before uh, that you know what i mean before that it would be 2017 okay uh it's just that the academy has gone has gotten very international and um yeah, i would love for there to be two best picture nominees in this category soon which i think will obviously happen soon yeah it, it's just France had submitted the right movie the <laughs> thing about it is there has but, you know. never been a best picture nominee maybe not even a best director nominee that has been nominated in this category that has lost and the the one exception to that isn't is like a technic is a complete technicality uh with the immigrants because it was in weird rules of the academy where you could be nominated for a national one year and then the next year you could come back and be nominated for a bunch of other stuff that is no that is no longer allowed and Zone of Interest is nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay. And it's no surprise. Yeah, I don't care that Society this now is an extra nomination or that it beat it at NPSC. Like, I, I think people just need to shut the hell up about this whole, like, well, they're going to vote for uh, the Best Picture movie, Best Picture, but something else is an international feature. You would think that Parasite winning both. <laughs> would debunk that it. nonsense but it hasn't it, it just it just hasn't even you know after drive my car after all quiet on the western front they still do this nonsense and i i hate it uh is society just known number two unfortunately probably because that is the worst <laughs> in this category uh, i i i know a lot of people like society does know i uh that movie sucks i'm sorry um yeah, uh, it's gonna be zone of interest, and uh, very France, interesting. You could have had it all. Win. You could have had it all, France. Think about it. And uh, my, favorite, my number one film of the year will have a will have an Academy Award win. So, what do we think of uh, Anatomy? Would have kicked out. Good question. <laughs> I actually don't know. I really uh, just thought about that. I don't know. Yo, Capitano. Maybe, yeah. I that's that's what I lean towards. That or the teachers lounge. Mm -hmm. I think Perfect Days would be safe because they don't normally nominate all European films in this category. Normally. normally. Yeah, France, uh, you could have had it all. You could have won in this category. Think about it. You could have won two awards. Yeah, I'm gonna copy Matt Neguia when he said Jonathan Glazer should thank the French selection committee in his, <laughs> in his speech. Uh 
for a lot also, of Also, <laughs> I would <laughs> like for the Academy to change this stupid rule where the director does not technically win the Oscar. It's a stupid, stupid rule. That's stupid. Like, I think they take it. I think they keep it most of the time, but most of the time. If the country asks for it, they have to return it, but um they do get to keep it. And then the director's name is on the award. But <laughs> that's so sad. You still like you need to like no 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 I'm no really no, depressing no. actually you get to keep the award your name's on it but it's not technically yours. So yeah, depressing. like no, you you need to change that. Make it the director's award and the producer's award too if you want to. Like the like animated and doc, but like come on. This is ridiculous. We're going so no no argument for perfect days, no argument for two for teachers lounge. <laughs> the devil's advocate. Is that society of the snow can still win, George? There's, uh, if society of the snow wins, I'm gonna do a January six in the academy. <laughs> Just like that would be um, so unserious, but it's not gonna happen, thankfully. So, all right, documentary feature. We're up to me for this one. Here's all the easy categories for a Bobby Wine, the People's President. Uh, the Eternal Memory, uh, Four Daughters, To Kill a Tiger, 20 Days, and Marry You, Paul. I think this is easily going to be 20 Days and Marry You, Paul. Um, some people would argue not quite as locked because it did lose PGA and ACE, but not, it, it lost those to nominated. American Symphony and still a Michael J. Fox movie, both of which are not nominated for the Oscar. Do you see and, the one prediction that said Bobby Wine is winning? Uh, I haven't. I think I I think if Someone there did. was going to be an upset, which I don't think there's going to be, but if there were going to be an upset, I don't think it would be Bobby Wine. I think it would be Four Daughters, uh, because that actually does have some precursors. It even beat Twenty Days of Mary Paul at one of them uh, at at the Gotham Awards specifically. Yeah, the and... argument is it's about a fight for freedom, but it's less brutal and has a charismatic subject to root for. It's the argument. The thing about Four Daughters, though, is that it's a more artistic film. Mm. It's made in a way that, like, is more. It's very non traditional documentary filmmaking. Right. And it's something that, you know, you could argue people could see that and be like, oh, that's interesting. And if they wanted to vote for it, they could. But. Um, look, 20s and Mary Paul even won DGA ahead of Bobby Wine and ahead of, well, I don't think any of these other films are nominated for PGA, but yeah, like that's an important thing. Yeah, I think, people are, overthink- I think people are overthinking it. I agree with you. Yeah, uh, I think it's just 20 days. I, it, it, it's going to be 20 days, and it, 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 it is the, the, best, the best film in the category at that. So. And uh, I know you agree with me, Chad, that it is, yes. you know, the deserved winner. So, okay, well, if we have nothing else, uh, we can move yeah. on to animated film. This one, this one's so a... this one's actually a discussion. Yeah, this uh, one's yeah for sure. Yeah, we're up to you for this one, Jared. We have the boy and the heron, elemental, the Mona, robot dreams, and Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Um, the robot dreams mention is cool. Um, That's a cool. I know the movie. big, the big part. The big part for our discussion is going to be is it Boy and the Heron or is it Spider Verse? Um and I'm gonna go Spider Verse just because the first one won. I think that the narrative of it's Miyazaki's last film died because that turned out wasn't true. Mm-hmm. Um and so I think if that narrative is allowed to play out more, maybe Boy and the Heron would win. They don't like sequels if you're not Toy Story. This is just a devil, devil's advocate. Yeah. That's but true. it's between those two. I don't know. I mean, if you do such I, a. I, I do think technically there is a part credence. one. Technically, <laughs> part one. I do think there is credence to the Boy and the Heron uh, possibly I winning. Get the I get the arguments for it. And it would be my preference. For the record, really? Boy and the Heron's one of my yeah, it's one of my top five films of the year. Do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't. Know. I do not. I think Spider Verse will probably win. The thing about it is this: it's what Jared said about like 
the narrative of it being Miyazaki's last film died when uh, uh, they announced. Actually, it's not Miyazaki's last film because th this man is like the Clint Eastwood of Japan. Like he says he's going into retirement, then he's like, nah, actually. He's going to make movies uh, until he dies. I think mm -hmm. that's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, he's going to retire. <laughs> he's just going to keep working. There's also a lot of people who say, who watch the film and are like, I did not get what happened at all. I don't know what the birds mean. I don't know what this means and that means and whatever, wherever the case is. And it's not his most accessible film. There's also some credence to the idea that at BAFTA, where it won, it was a closed vote, unlike it is here. Oh, was it? Was it just yeah. uh, the branch? It, or whatever? Yeah, it, and anyone else who wants to opt in and watch all the films. Okay. So now I don't think it's impossible still. Like I think it's 25% chance, which anyone who plays poker will tell you 25% chance is not is not anything to 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 brush brush off to the side. Like no, that that's real. Like you like you need to take that seriously. But I think Spider-Man it's the more known film, it's the more accessible film. Um it was closer to other nominations than the boy in the harem was most likely. And it won, what ace PGA. PGA yeah. The guild. Everyone, every it. single girl. Sweet I, the I, Annies. It, it's, 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 it's still certainly a race. It's, it's more of a, of a race than Encanto versus Mitchell's. I think like some people were talking about that as a, as a possible race. I would have loved that to be more than um to be clear, I don't I don't think these are quite the same because I'm actually not a big fan of either Encanto or Mitchell's. I at least do really like Spider-Man, even if Boy in the Heron is my favorite here. You're blasphemy, really. Blasphemy. I'm sorry, Jasmine. This I'm is sorry. where I was where this is where I walk out. There's no world I was gonna dislike Mitchell's. I am literally the main character in that movie. Which is fair enough. Yeah, Mitchell's is good. <laughs> I am the main character. In that I movie. mean, I don't, I don't yeah. dislike the movie. I just think it's okay. But um, no, I do think that uh, Spider Verse is probably just gonna win. And I totally I'm not... get the arguments. I totally get the arguments for Boy in the Heron. I was listening to MVP's podcast and like listening to their arguments about it. And like, there's there's some fair arguments. They don't like. There are good arguments for it. I do, and I do think it has a legit so... chance. It does have a legitimate chance. Yeah, it being a sequel is probably really doesn't help it. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. It's it. It's not as easy as yeah. it was for the first film. Yeah. Uh, but if Spider Verse doesn't win, which I am predicting it too, I'm not going to be as upset about it as if Elemental won, which which and I just when Elemental I think is just so goddamn mid like. <laughs> I was, you know, totally I would, I like, I would be more yeah. upset if Elemental beat Boyd and Heron than I would be if Spider Verse did. I think MVP said this that I can't remember the exact number. But, like, this is gonna be like the longest like Pixar has gone without winning, which kind of deserved because Disney is deserved. evil. <laughs> is you know evil company. Uh, okay, they'll be in the room next year. Guys, guys, them. guys, guys, guys. Elemental, I would take away over Wish. So, I well, to be fair, I have not seen Wish, and also yeah. to be fair, if I had to seen fair, Wish, Jared, I think I would probably agree with you still. <laughs> to be fair, Darren, the bar is the floor. Uh, I don't think Elemental is awful, but I get. No, it's gonna be hard for me. I don't think it's awful either. I just said it's mid. I don't think Wish. I mean, I don't think Wish is very good. So it's like. Very it's like well. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like above mid, but not like great or good. Kind of like in that little gray area. I don't know. I am like calling elemental mid. Um, but like when the hair and Spiders are like ten steps on the ladder above it. I agree with that. And, and not the seeing robot the dreams are also a lot better. So yeah, you I haven't, haven't seen, seen the Moda? I have not no. You would love it, Jared. You're I feel like I would. Love Jared, that. it's it's on YouTube. Netflix put yeah. the movie on their YouTube channel. Yeah, so like, I, mean, really I think, no I, think I would have preferred like the Mario movie over Wish. Like, like Wish just was not good. Like, 
I think that we have like a solid lineup overall. I think it's a really like, good line. I think it's a yeah. Really good yeah, it's line. actually Robot strong. Dreams, Ro- Robot Dreams getting in like was just such a good shock. Like, it's so it's so insane that Neon Sun releasing that movie. And like, it's very random that it got in. Who I like so- Neon Sun. Neon's not releasing that movie until May, like which theatrically. So stupid, which is so stupid. Which well, is like, can can I Neon make a statement, please, about really why understand. you decided to do it? Yeah, they did at like, least do some early screenings uh, this week. I mean, yeah. yeah, but they they I don't understand because so many movies. Yeah, I don't get it. Box either. office just. Yeah, and it's also like from like it's been playing at or... festivals and stuff since Cannes, so people have been seeing it for have been like watching it for almost a year. Yeah, it's literally the only reason I've seen it is because fest- I saw it at a festival. One of my friends just watched it at a screening in New York and he really loved it. It, it is really good. Um, if you saw good. my uh, my Ehrlich style countdown video, you're going to see it on there. So... I, I love that video. Y'all go watch it on his <laughs> YouTube channel. It's really good. Because he dropped, and he'll drops the Pet Shop Boys semi spoiler alert. <laughs> so I'll rate it 10 out of 10. It is the first um, song that plays in it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not much of a spoiler. Uh, okay. We're going to start okay, running out. So of this next category, I need all help. So, uh, well, uh, Jasmine will start us off here with best original song. That was uh, we go musics before text. Uh, oh, Fire okay. Inside from Flamin' Hot. <laughs> I'm Just Ken from Barbie. It Never Went Away from American Symphony. Wajaji, a song for my people from Killers of the Fire Moon. And What Was I Made For from Barbie. So this is obviously Diane Warren's year. We've been waiting for it for like 15 years. I think she's finally going to get her to appear. Oh, no. There's, there's this movie and one other movie that I hate will forever be remembered in history as Academy Award nominated films the over the over like Salt it. over um all the strangers. Uh, like that that's so sad. Flaming Hot and Nyad. What the heck? <laughs> um <laughs> uh, uh yeah obviously Diane Warren is winning this year. No, she can win for the, this year for her doc that she has coming out. <laughs> that's oh probably yeah God. next year with Jazz her doc. Come out and it's the premiere gets South by Southwest, doesn't it? Oh yeah. My god. Oh my god, we should oh Brett to go. We don't yeah, we, yeah, to we go have to see. force Brett to watch it. <laughs> I need to know. You know the first thing everyone's gonna get out of that screening, and everyone's gonna tell us if there's an original song in it. <laughs> it's all I think that was already announced. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, this is Billy Eilish, easily Billy Eilish in my opinion. I know a yeah. couple of people think it's a race. I I personally don't. I think a lot of people I don't either think it is. at this point. I mm-hmm. think like the industry obviously loves Billie Eilish. She is beloved in the industry. Um, yeah, the song plays in a very important. I know, and I know, like I'm just kind of obviously also plays in the movie. I think that what was I made for plays in a very emotionally pivotal part of the movie at the end. <laughs> Um, I know that I'm just Ken is also like kind of a semi. It's not like a complete joke song, but it is kind of a comedy song. And I know R R R just won last year. Um, I also think that also partially won because the movie wasn't nominated. But the Academy doesn't tend to lean towards more comedic songs. Um, no, I think this just, this just has everything for Billy Eilish to have two Oscars before the age of twenty two. She's the which scene. makes She's me, which scene. makes me, which insane. makes me feel terrible about myself, to be honest. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I was just about her. to say. Like, She's the same insane. age as George and I, like, like, and obviously, yeah. like, Grammys obviously are a precursor for. Yeah, it won song, but like, it, like, it, it, like Billie Eilish got like five nominations, and she doesn't have her third album out yet. Like, based off of being a featured artist and being on the Barbie soundtrack, she got like five nominations, like. And and, and this song is she's loved. Song, it's a she's, song of the year. It's like yeah, she yeah. she's loved. I think this is gonna be what the third movie to like win like song of the year or something. And like it's this... the fir- I'll tell you. I don't know how many exactly there are, but this is the first one since uh, uh, I forget the song. I forget the song name, but it was the one from Titanic. I my heart will go on from the Titanic. Yeah, my heart will go on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I which is kind of listen, crazy. I. 
but I am and I'm just Ken. Stand over here. That's what I oh would vote God. for. Oh my God. But mm-hmm. I I I I have to acknowledge that it's going to be Billy again. And oh, and my preference in the category is what was I made for? I actually don't. I don't know. know. I'm. I actually don't I'm like. Not... I'm just kind of like everyone else. I think I well, don't understand the love for. It. I wish I did. I I I, I don't understand the love for Billy. I wish in general. I don't think she's a bad bad singer or anything. It's just like she's just not really my style of music. I guess. I don't understand the love for. I'm just kind. Of, I don't really also love comedic <laughs> songs. They're not my like. To be fair, I don't think this category is like all that great. Uh, I think that it never went away as a good song. I don't think it's Actually, a great song. I don't, ironically, I don't think the Diane Owen song is bad. It is one of her better songs. Uh, which is I a mean, little it's bit better of a than bar. the song last year, but it, I, I still think it's terrible. Bar. I still think it's terrible. I'm sorry. And I still, Wajanji, you're also not, your, not really your type of Wajanji Wajanji is music. cool for what the song is, but I find it really, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just a hard song to listen to outside of the context of the film. Uh, I personally think Dance the Night should have been nominated. No, not it, it, I'll tell you what should have been nominated. We, we should have had Quiet Eyes from Past Lives. We should have had uh, Meet in the Middle from Florence Sun. We should Look, have I had, just camp- wanted, I just we should have had Camp Isn't Home from Theater Camp. Like, I want Dua Lipa to perform at the Oscars. That's all I wanted. I, I want the kids it. from Theater Camp I... to perform on the on the stage at the Dolby Theater. <laughs> yes. I thought Dance and I would be a great opening number. She opened Dua Lipa opened the Grammys with like a, a mashup of her song. And that and that song is it. popular. <laughs> like, I thought Dance the Night should have opened the Gra- opened the Oscars. I thought it would have been great. But I, it, it, I, I, when I was in New York this past weekend, it was playing in uh on on the very radio catchy. in an Uber very car. Cr- it's very catchy. I do quite like it actually. It is catchy. <laughs> it is catchy. <laughs> But like again, I wanted Quiet Eyes. I wanted to be in the middle. I wanted Campus and Home. Yeah. I would love Campus and Home. I'm so sad that um Theater Camp got just shafted by also being searched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think this category is really easy. Well, let's go to the other easy music category. Uh, are you going are you going Billy, Miss Billy Eilish? Yeah, Miss Billy Eilish. Though hype for Ryan Gosling gonna be performing, I'm just can't Oscars, thank God. They try to be like, he might not do it, and then he's gonna do it. So thank goodness right. for that. I am glad everyone is very happy that he's performing it. <laughs> I'm glad that everyone else is very happy. Um I will be a core number, so well, now I think it's gonna be like oh, one of their most like I think biggest numbers that they've done in like recent years. I think first reported. It's gonna be a massive, massive number that he's doing. All right. Well, then we have original score, uh, American fiction, uh, the movie that shall not be named because it stole <laughs> nominations from other films, <laughs> uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Uh, we're up all to the easy categories. <laughs> it it it. It, oh, it's Oppenheimer. Know. It it was Oppenheimer the moment it like every TikTok started using uh can you hear the music? Like that's when it was over. Yeah, this is another locked category. I spent locked for a very long time. Uh my <laughs> preference in this lineup is poor things. I think this is a really good score. If past lives was here, that would be my preference. I think well, that's my John favorite Williams? score of the year. Not Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I will come up to Calgary and I will <laughs> personally give you a Colombian necktie. Uh, n- nah, it, 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 but it it doesn't matter. It's gonna be Oppenheimer. Um, That's fucking John Williams, dude. If, if, if you really wanted to stretch, you could say Killers is two because there's like a Robbie Robertson like uh, posthumous narrative, but that never took off. Like, if it was going to take off anywhere, it would have had to have been at the Golden Globes or the Critics' Choice, and obviously that didn't happen. This is a uh, category where the distance between one and two is so large. Yeah. It is the distance from here to Pluto. It's, it's going to be a blowout. Like, a complete blowout. So, yeah. It's, well, it's I'm glad. Be... I'm glad uh, a little more in the same. It is cool though that Driscoll Fendricks is here. Uh, not again, not like Sean Long, not even thirty years old, and also he's from the same music scene as Black Country, New Road, and Black Midi. So 
I would um, not complain about Ludwig Gordonson having another Oscar. So, I mean, I like him more than his Black Panther score, but also I wanted Beale Street to win that year. Right now, everyone's like, if only Beale Street could have won, <laughs> and then Ludwig could have won for this, <laughs> and just this. <laughs> Uh, if only Nicholas Patel did Oppenheimer, and then we could have Oscar winner Nicholas Patel. Mm-hmm. I never really want to know what a Nicholas Patel <laughs> Oppenheimer score sounds like. Honestly, it might not sound too dissimilar. Maybe Maybe a bit more succession. Me Nicholas Patel. Man, you're just reminding me that Nicholas Patel is underrewarded. Thanks, George. That's my job because it is absolutely criminal. Disappointment. He, he, it's it's a criminal that he doesn't have an Oscar. <laughs> Okay. I don't think he ever won for Succession either at the Emmys, which is also a crime. No, he won for the credits, I think. Okay, okay. The titles. The titles on. Yeah. When are we starting the Nicholas Patel? When are we giving you an Oscar train? Uh, you mm-hmm. know, as much <laughs> as I hate these these movies, if he won for the Mufasa movie that's going to come out, I, I'd be like, hey, at least he has one. <laughs> is that how desperate you are? At this point. At this point, yeah. Oh god, that is all he has. Oh, Though to be fair, it's not a remake; it's an original story, and um, I I just hope Barry Jenkins can do something with it. So, Lucas Patel has the oddest filmography, by the way. Dude, like Cruella, he did Don't Look Up, he did Carmen, he did She Said, and now he's doing Mufasa. What an odd filmography! Hey, a lot of great scores in there. <laughs> all right, visual effects. Oh god, hardest category of the night. We're up to Jared for this. Uh, yeah. The creator, Godzilla Minus One, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Napoleon. I uh, think you gave me the one. Okay, good luck, I'm Jared. not sure about. Um... You're like, good luck, That's... Jared. Right. I, 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 did, I did the number one on Gold Derby, which is Godzilla Minus One. Um, there, I know that there's love for this film, but I feel like it's a small love. So I don't know. Um, I, like I guess it'd be cool. Kind of um, would now. love, would just love to hear your two opinions. Um, a lot of people are hope dicting Godzilla. <laughs> to be honest. Well, I think there is a genuine case for it. I think the genuine case, but I think the number one reason it's the number one on gold are because a lot of people are like hope dicting it. I mean, here, 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 here's here's the argument. It would be a message to Hollywood that, hey, we don't like how. Uh, Hollywood is inflating movie uh, budgets on these lo- blockbuster films to get really shitty visual effects, while uh, Godzilla Minus One, a film like that, also a film like The Creator, has a smaller budget, is more conservative with their budget, and the visual effects turn out uh, great. Now, on the flip side, with Godzilla Minus One specifically, I'm not sure if this is the case with the creator. In Japan, the studios do not pay their visual effects artists, which is why partly why the budgets are so low. I do not know if that is something that voters even know about, let alone would take into consideration. But it would be a bit hypocritical if that's what they're going to... Not so much hypocritical. It, it would be under false pretenses if that's how they were voting. I think this is one of the and only categories when almost anything... There is credence to the idea that Godzilla is like probably the most liked film in this category because the creator... It didn't necessarily get bad reviews. It just got a lot of mixed reviews. And also, like, nobody saw it. Um, one anonymous voter, voter did say that he did not like this movie. <laughs> he like really, but he and, voted for it. He really liked the effect, but he didn't say he really didn't like the movie. <laughs> well, speaking of anonymous ballots, not that these are like gospel or anything. I think Godzilla was my name. They did say that they were going to vote for the creator until they watched the Bake Off reel. Oh yeah, he said, and that after they saw be... that. They, they switched to Godzilla. He also said that it should be mandatory for people to watch the Bake Off. Which I the kind of agree, happened. to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, the, no, the creator is leading, and I know as well. It's not that they obviously mean everything, but yeah, the creator is winning seven to five for Godzilla, and then Guardians is two mentions. When you look at this, conventional wisdom would say Napoleon because it's the most like a Best Picture nominee. It also has a production design nomination, which has been very indicative of what wins 
And it also has the most. Of course, if it, if it does effects. win, then I'm never going against a production design stat ever again. It also has the most nominations outside of the effects. Right. With that said, if Napoleon were going to win visual effects, why did it lose at BAFTA to Poor Things? But if they just nominated Poor Things, if they just nominated Poor Things here, this entire conversation would be over because we would all just go Poor Things. Furthermore, if Napoleon were going to win the Oscar. Why did it lose the supporting visual effects category of VDS Society to fucking Nyad? Please stop reminding me, George. <laughs> a movie that has terrible reminded. visual effects that didn't even make the Oscar shortlist. I don't know those guys talking the hall. That's not the hall, guys. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. And it proves to me that, like, they don't really take this movie that seriously. And it is also a movie that is just not very well liked. Uh, the creator, I think, at least has a fresh Rotten Tomato score. Napoleon's got a run Rotten Tomato score, both from critics and audiences. It's um, there's a lot audience of is just... seventy six and critics is sixty seven. The audiences like this movie more than critics, which kind of isn't a shock to be honest. The creator, yeah, seventy six audience. Okay, the creator is, I, I think, traditionally the most like a winner. Because they like a lot of science fiction, and it is a blockbuster. It's Napoleon's you know, fifty nine, a hundred million. It's not even a hundred million dollars, but that movie looks uh, stunning. I don't. I don't think it's a great movie by any means, personally. But um, well, I, I I say not by any means, but the visual. I mean, technically speaking, the movie is immaculate. I have no qualms with the movie's visual style. Uh, or its visual effects but um it's a movie that you know not a lot of people really saw and a movie that some people don't really like but it did win visual effects society and it is the only film in this lineup to actually win a precursor which is kind of insane that 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 probably would incline me to predict it something that kind of holds me back a little bit though is the fact that obviously Visual Effects Society was going to vote for it, and you know that's just Visual Effects people. This is open to the entire Academy. It is worth noting though that the creator did get a nomination, an extra nomination outside of Visual Effects, that shocked the world because it did not get nominated for a single precursor in that category. And lo and behold, it, it showed up. This is actually tougher than I thought uh, it was going to be going into it. I I think I'm going to go with the creator for now. I might change before Sunday. But for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the creator. And um, yeah, that's what I'll go with for now. I think Godzilla would be my vote. But I, I, I think realistically, the creator just makes more sense. So I think if they just nominated four things, this entire conversation would be done because we would all just go with that picture. Forget, forget four things. If Dune hadn't moved, this would be over. No, Dune hadn't moved. This entire tech race would be completely over. <laughs> well, it, it would make some of the races more interesting. But yeah, four things, hadn't, four things had just been nominated here. This race would be so much easier because we would all just go for the best picture nominee automatically but they didn't nominate so we're all sitting in a pickle mm -hmm. uh i think i have the creator right now i don't have the balls to do godzilla if i'm being honest i don't think i have like the balls to do it and once again if napoleon wins i will never ever ever again go against production design stat I cry if I win. i've not heard anything enthusiastic it is just it's not that great visual that. effects like it's really it's 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 not that impressive. I think the sad thing is apart from like Mission Impossible, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if like any of them won. I'd be a little bit surprised if Guardians won, to be honest. Because like they've gone out of their, but I'd be they've gone out of their way if... to not give it to Marvel before. I know, but if it like won, I wouldn't be I'd be surprised if not like super super surprised. I would be surprised if Mission Impossible. I would be surprised if that one. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Mission Impossible won too. Have we helped you at all, Jared? Um, kind of. <laughs> I I think I'm just gonna take the bite the bullet and still stick with Godzilla. 
um just in case there's just a secret like push I for it. it honestly i appreciate it i don't have the balls to do that unfortunately yeah someone needs to do that too someone has mm-hmm. to do it <laughs> all right <sighs> well, let's go to an easy category uh or is it easy no nah, it's easy sound the creator, <laughs> Maestro, Ma- Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Oppenheimer, The Zone of Interest, and we are up to Jasmine. I thought you were going to say that I knew a little bit of costumes or something. Um, this is a race, kind of. This is like a 2080 race into a zone. Lost to MPSE. <laughs> God. So unserious. So <laughs> unserious. <laughs> Now it's like ninety nine to one. Um, I would have loved Zone to win here. Zone is my uh, Zone is my choice. I think it is some of the best sound work of the decade. I think it is outstanding. I I think it should win. Not that I don't love Oppie's sound work, but um, no, it's just Oppie. This is another one where it's I agree. Super easy. With check it off. Everyone's gonna get like a guaranteed like ten right, not going into the awards. So. I agree with good. <laughs> everything you said there. Yeah, very um, simple. Zone of Interest is my preference. I think that has probably the best sound work maybe of the century, to be honest. But it, it's going to be Oppenheimer. Uh, NPSC, you are so unserious <laughs> for that society does no win. Are you absolutely shitting me? Even before that, though, I really did not have any doubt in my mind that it was going to be Oppenheimer. Uh I like the little race we had for like it's it's TV the play. loudest film. It's the best picture front runner. It's winning editing. It's also the only one here that's even nominated for editing. So yeah, like y- there's no reason to not go for it. Zone of interest winning BAFTA though, that was cool. I it was appreciate cool. it. a race for about five minutes, which was nice. Don't have a lot of those in this, uh, this Oscar year. Yeah, it was an, it was a nice um it was a nice one. Um, but it 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 will be off a timer at the end of the day. Very excited for Jared to finally watch the zone of interest and you know see so you can see what that sound is about. It's Friday. <laughs> I'll be I'll I'll be re- I'll be waiting. Okay. And I assume you're going with Oppenheimer as well. Yeah, yeah. Oppenheimer. Jared's going to get into the grain. I'm going with the creator. <laughs> That'd be so funny. I, want, I, I would love Oppenheimer, great film. and wins. Great. Um, I'm going to love just as much if something like the creator wins. <laughs> if there were to be any upset, I think it would still be zone of interest. Um, it was just like a 10% mm-hmm. chance as opposed to like a 20% uh, as it would have been if and PSC did not more of itself. But yeah. Okay, best production design. We're up to me now. Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I think uh, the fact that Poor Things um, won at Art Director's Guild over Barbie, like in direct competition with Barbie, tells me everything I need to know. Barbie has really uh, stunning work in Barbie Land. But, you know, when you get into the real world, it's not quite as impressive. And with Poor Things, the whole film has really um, insane production design is is something to consider as well. And also the fact that Barbie, outside of song, has, and, and maybe costumes, has lost an insane amount of momentum. And I think ultimately, poor things is just, is just going to take it in the end. And personally, not I'm and I'm not trying to uh, piss on Barbie's grave here or anything, but I I think poor things is the better choice. I do. Sorry, Barbie. Um, so uh, I'm I, I'm I'm going to go poor things, and that is also my preference. Yeah, poor things also has a lot of sets. Like they like the the city was like. Felt like Abbott Stone like walks around like that city. That's like a whole city Lisbon. set that they built. Mm-hmm. A whole city set that they built. Like the everything. Cruise ship, is, they, I think uh, everything Godwin's that's house. Is a built set. It's There's like, that little 
car carriage hybrid thing from the beginning. Yeah, everything is a set. It's a lot of sets. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think poor things. I think I don't think Barbie's also like every word for this. It's lost everything against uh, against poor things. So um I don't think Barbie wins this. There's like maybe a two percent chance, but I think this one's just poor things, personally. Yeah, and, and two um, poor things as well. This went by a little bit easier than uh, some might think. But will the next category do that? Probably not. Makeup and hairstyling. Uh, here we are up to Jared. Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Society of the Snow. I'm going to go with Maestro just because of the best picture nominee of it all. The, um, the, the aging of Bradley Cooper. Um, Carrie Mulligan at the end with what happens. Um, You're not going for Goldo? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that brilliant movie? Oh my no, god. No, Goldo. But I don't, yeah, I think it's just like the consensus is maestro. But I mean, the more I think about it, I'm like, Oppenheimer kind of is the same deal, right? Like, it's, it's like, the I honestly don't know the what end. that movie is doing. I don't know why the movie's nominated. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's not really that showy makeup. Yeah, it is at the end. Yeah, but like and, the rest well, of the movie. Well, and yes, hold on. Yeah, you start when Kelly Murphy is playing like a 20 year old at the beginning. So they have to do like contour his face and I, I, make I, it I younger. Guess, I guess, but I, I think it's, it has a nomination. I think there's a reason why. And then poor things, I guess, is it more because of the, like, animals? It's because of William Dafoe. William Dafoe, well, there it, It's go. William okay. Dafoe, and it's also, like, other details on the other actors. Not as showy, but other details, like... I guess, like, the like the lady who runs the brothel. I forgot her name. Yeah, Catherine Hunter. Um, mm-hmm. Emma Stone's hair, how hair. the detail and uh. how it gets longer. Throughout the film, yeah, they're, not paying, eyebrows attention. As they're well. not paying attention to the hair, y'all. <laughs> Duncan's <laughs> Duncan's know. mustache. Y'all think they pay attention to the hair part of the the title of this category? I don't. I mean the um, the lady the lady she meets on the cruise ship, awesome, like that hair. <laughs> I mean, makeup yeah. artists pay attention to it. Like, I think Black Panther got in last year because of its hair more than its makeup. I feel um, like they forget that there is a hairstyling part of this category. <laughs> Yeah. There's a little unfortunate, but I um I was ready to jump the poor things after BAFTA, but then Makeup Guild goes with Maestro in the pro in the effects category, and I'm like, God damn it. This is what because, the whale won last year. Be, it's just a yeah, the whale and also it, it was in direct competition with poor things. And like I'm not gonna say Maestro isn't impressive, but like at the same time, I feel like it's just kind of lazy to vote for something because it's like, oh, this actor is so unrecognizable. I'm gonna vote for it. Like, okay, like even if it's impressive, like I feel like like that's not why you should vote for for it. I love the makeup and poor things dearly because of all the details to it and you know the body horror um elements of it as well. It it reminds me a lot of the Elephant Man, which is the film that. <laughs> it, uh, is the reason this category exists to begin with but um no it's ultimately just going to be maestro and um i think if anything it, what we're going to upset it it would be poor things but it's probably just going to be maestro and god knows why barbie won it um critic choice because the hairstyling probably i don't know I, it, 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 sure um, um, I think something that MVP pointed out is that because like one of the big reasons he's not nominated was because of the makeup on Willem Dafoe, it doesn't help that he's also not nominated to right. go along with with the makeup nomination, as usually goes. Even if they like don't win, obviously, because there's not always the win pairing, but like there is that, usually the, the other problem, nomination yeah. for the actor that it's for. So it doesn't help that Willem Dafoe didn't get nominated. And, and it's also funny because the film in this category that has an actor as actors who are most likely going to win, like, has no chance here. So... Oh, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's probably just going to be Maestro as much as I personally 
just kind of uh, begrudge it. I do think there's a small chance that Parking comes out. But I'm I, 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 I hope so. I hope so. But, you know, after the whale last year, like, yeah. They like their big transformative makeup performances. Uh, well, let's move which on I to do the... think is a little lazy. Which I do think is a little lazy. It but... is very lazy to me. Uh, but let's move on to another um easy, 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 easy category. Best film editing. No. Oh. <laughs> Jasmine, this is yours. Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Give me all the easy ones. Uh, you've got a hard one coming up here, I think. I feel like um, you've given Jared all. I feel like you've given Jared all the like tough ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is how that's the, what I have um, you guys for. <laughs> this is how the order just ultimately ended up playing out. All right, so we're all going um anatomy of the fall, right? Let's go, P I M P. Uh, uh, no, this is no, no, no. This, this is another sleeper. Shock, shocker. Uh, yeah, another sleeper. Ooh. Um, on my anatomy of the fall never really matter but for the sweepers they also sweep on the anonymous dogs which makes sense or they usually do there's a couple of exceptions but oppenheimer is like just by far sweeping it's like 14 to three right now it's like 14 to three right now it is just an absolute blow shout out to the one person who said he's running for the holdovers good for you <laughs> and like three people who, who voted for anatomy of a fall yeah people have been voted for anatomy one which for i the do think anatomy of a fall like there's a case for that to be second place here. The editing that is very, very good. Um, also, shout out to the two I, people I, who are voting yeah. who said they're voting for Fire Inside for Song. Shout out to those two people. <laughs> in patting Wars. myself on the back for predicting an anime would fall, but also patting myself on the back because in my early predictions, I had Oppenheimer winning this category, film editing. And yeah, Oppenheimer, uh, I never had any ace. other winner. I never had any other winner. Even when people said, oh, but Dune's going to win. I'm like, guys, they like Christopher Nolan films in this category. Yeah, I think Oppenheimer and, has won literally every single award that yeah. possibly could in this category. Um, if, if, if this movie wins sound, winning. which it very well could, like it could, it could also just win editing. Like I know everything everywhere broke the step, but that doesn't mean it's going to be broken forever, guys. I'm just saying. But I do think this is a very deserved thing it coincidentally is the only award i would vote for oppenheimer here but well well I was, not, I, not at the I'm oscars between, no in my personal awards that's it, it, it it's the only one i'm but between an oppenheimer and anatomy it changes my opinion i think oppenheimer's editing is absolutely brilliant uh just you know obviously like keeping up with the pace of the film but going back and forth between the timelines and of course, the Trinity test sequence, that's one of the best edited sequences of recent memory. It's 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 up there. It's going to be up there with everything everywhere all at once. Like one of the best wins, two of them, both of the, some of the best wins of all time. I think so this is a category that I think we've known. The it's a one two for... punch of two incredible winners. I think this is a category we've known the winner for for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah and for very, a category very that, fun fact, this is, I think film editing is my favorite category because. It's I mean, maybe it's because for me. <laughs> it, it, it's because like I I am an editor at heart. I kind of really love editing myself. A lot of people don't, but I love it, and uh, I th I think it's so in it's such an interesting category. I personally don't really understand why the holdovers is here, but the other four, I think, are great. Uh, and even with the holdovers here, like I like, there's no Bohemian Rhapsody here. So, but it's going to be Oppenheimer. It, it like there's really no other discussion that is needed. We probably discussed it more than we needed to. Yeah, it won months ago. So yeah, it's probably the most locked tech category. For being perfectly honest, yeah. Okay, costume design. We're back up to me for this one. Have fun. <laughs> Barbie kills the fire moon. The pulling Oppenheimer. Poor things. So if I were a betting man. I would say the safest bet is you predict Barbie for costumes, poor things for production design. Because you would probably get one of them right. And I think Barbie, I think it's kind of a coin flip here. Because both films have an excellent case to make. That being said, I am kind of uncomfortable with the idea of poor things 
potentially having production is only when potentially that depends on what happens in a different category that we're going to get to later, obviously, but it's kind of weird that would go one for 11. There's also a similar problem where with Barbie, where yes, they were in different categories at costumes guild, but they were both nominated at BAFTA and Barbie lost. Uh, a lot of people compare this to black Panther versus the favorite. I even did this for a long time myself. There was a very clear difference in that Black Panther was not nominated at BAFTA, so it didn't technically lose. Barbie was nominated at BAFTA and just lost. I think there's also something to be said for the fact that the costume design lineup is the same as the costume design lineup as the BAFTA. And also, costume design lineup and production design lineup are the same at the Oscars, which I think is lame, personally. But uh, that's just the way things turned out. To be fair, BAFTA did love four things quite a bit. I mean, to be fair. BAFTA's Hall and the Oscars Hall are not that dissimilar, to be honest. I am very willing, I, I'm very much aware this is a toss-up. This is th- this is a real coin flip. Four things also first time nominee. I mean, yeah. But actually, yeah, good point. When was the last time? <laughs> a first time nominee. Jacqueline Duran, I think, has two wins. She, she has two. <sighs> And Barbie has a lot of costumes, just like number one. I, a lot yeah, of costumes, I really, costumes, I really don't know. I really don't know what to do here, to be honest. I really don't. Like, Poor Things is the bigger costume, but like Barbie has well, the they most both costumes. Have, they both have big costumes, and Barbie doesn't have the problem that it has in production design here because the costumes are showy all throughout the film. No, I meant physically. Like they, they just they're very kind of. Big I, I know. In I'm, your I face. no, I, I get the point you're making. I was making good. Completely different point. Okay. Um, shit. The, yeah, this is hard. M- right now, and as then, of like this MVP moment, say that like there's like a moment. I haven't seen the movie since it came out. That like there's a moment in the movie where they like literally talk about the costumes that they're wearing. Yeah, they they th- <laughs> like when Ken is throwing out Barbie's costumes, it freeze frames on the costumes, which right. is honestly not a bad argument in favor of it. The costumes are like. Obviously not the, like the costumes are like obviously very important part of like four things, but like for Barbie, I it think... like really went like a whole nother level. Like Margot Robbie and and Billie Eilish are both using like outfits of Barbie as like their award show outfits and their like red carpet outfits. Yeah, and obviously a very as... minor thing, but like what was the most, what was the biggest like Halloween costume this Halloween? Soccer with Barbie and Ken, so. I think that as of this moment, my gut leans Barbie. So right now, that is what I will do. But Poor Things is right there. And again, I'm not taking these as gospel, but it is worth noting how Poor Things in the anonymous ballots, it's actually a blowout for Poor Things. Which I Even more than production design. I found very surprising. Like, Actually. Like, it's like 10 for Poor Things, 2 for Barbie, which is insane. Okay, I don't think it's that much. I think it's a little higher now. <laughs> I, I I think it's a little higher now. I'm 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 generalizing. I don't have the the, the thing pulled in front of me, but uh, it's eight yeah. to five, right? It's eight to five right now. It's gonna be for makeup. Uh, is oh, six that's to not nine, and we're that's not that's that's is. actually not that's actually a bit closer than it was earlier. Yeah, poor thing. Okay, it's poor thing nine in my show six for makeup and hairstyling, Phoebe Bayer. So, and we're all going my show so. <laughs> But that does show there's a lot of love for that makeup and poor thing. Like, there's a lot of love for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Barbie for now. But, man, th- this is, like, one of three categories that I could easily change before the ceremony. I think MVP did make a very good point in saying that poor things is more likely to win both than Barbie is to win both. I don't think Barbie wins both. I think Barbie just wins No, I, I I do agree with that. I do think. I don't I, think, I, I think Barbie wins both. I'd be really shocked if Barbie won both. And then, like, Poor Things doesn't win actress, and it ties with, like, the color purple and winning, like, absolutely not. It, co- it would, would be, be color purple at the turning sad. point. 11. Which, I would be gone. That would be sad. <laughs> that would be like, very sad. <laughs> that would be, like, so unserious, too. I would be uh, absolutely shocked. It would be pretty, it would be pretty shocking, yeah. I also feel weird just potentially just giving it one. Um, but again, this is one of three categories I could change. I could change this to poor things at any time, and I, I could, I could, e- I could easily see one of them happening. I really could. 
Yeah, I am Barbie right now. Uh, and if it was, if this was a split Barbie costumes, four things production sign, I think I'd be perfectly fine with that. I'd be fine winning with either winning either. They're both very worthy. I think I would prefer that poor things would production design no matter what happens because like uh that like that even goes above and beyond babylon to me so good what are you going oh, for costumes um i'm gonna go barbie um i think y'all made a good point of like there's even this scene where ken is throwing out all of her costumes making that like a big point of deal um it was a big costume for halloween um and just in general, just like how many, you know, the, the opening kind of little narration there, which is all the different like oh, women yeah. dressed as Barbies. That's also an accomplishment as well. And just the pinks and the styles of representing the different time periods, I think goes into it as well. So I'm pretty safe with having Barbie in costumes. Well, just all be wrong though. Hey, look, that's that's just how that's just how it goes. <laughs> That's just how it goes sometimes. Happened at the Golden Globes for screenplay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to an easy one. Best cinematography. Uh, Jared, mm. we're up to you now. El Conde, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. Yay. Shocker. Oh my god. I never would have thought. Oh my goodness. I thought you were going to say El Conde. Now, I'm going to get up <laughs> on my soapbox for a second because I'm not here to disparage Oppenheimer or what Hoyt Van Hoynema does, but Listen, I bum, do not know how you Don't watch poor things and, and not think that's the best cinematography of the year. Don't put like, that button there. You should say it louder. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not predicting. I'm not predicting. I'm not even entertaining it. I'm just saying. Wait, 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 my deserves to this Oscar. How do you not watch poor things and think that's the and how do you watch poor things and not think that's the best cinematography of the year? It is insane. We're it's, gonna watch Hoyt Van get his Oscar. We're all gonna be happy for him. I'm gonna pretend yes. it's for dope because like it, 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 poor things just should win. I'm gonna be happy for Hoyt. <laughs> well, I want Robbie Ryan to win something too. Okay. <laughs> uh interesting none of these um five nominees like but all of them have been nominated before but none of them have won well when Hoyma can be an oscar winner we can all be happy for him. <laughs> i want robbie ryan to win something um hopefully they they pull a uh, uh, barbara streisand and gather pepper and tie them <laughs> but no well, i want them to tie actress specifically actress actually. why not both <laughs> Um, no, it's going, it's going to be Oppenheimer, and I, if Poor Things were not here, I would be perfectly happy with it, but Poor Things is here. And in any other year, I think that would easily win. But, alas. Uh, Alright, let's move on before I, before I cry. Oh no. <laughs> Best original screenplay. We're up to Jasmine, right? Yes, Jasmine. Anatomy of a Fall, screenplay by Justine Trier and Arthur Harari. The Holdovers, written by David Hemmingson. Maestro, written by Bradley Cooper and Josh Singer. May December, screenplay by Sammy Birch. Story by Sammy Birch and Alex Mechanic. And Past Lives, Hi, written right by back. Celine Song. Jasmine. George. What are you doing here? Uh, so I mean, I have an idea. Life, the past life is winning, obviously. It's won absolutely nothing, but it's going to surprise somehow. <laughs> Oscar Clayton. evening. That's, that's Clayton. We're all going to rig the vote. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, this is very obviously Anatomy of a Fall. Um, started with the Globe, and then it went back to... Um, if it was eligible for WGA, it would probably just been WGA as well, but it's not eligible because of... WJ's rules or fucking whatever excuses they give. Um, you know, easily anatomy for fall. This started as a very confusing race and then very quickly narrowed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we um, all thought it was going to be a little bit of 
a fight between uh, and the holdovers or like past lives. Um, was past lives going to be the only best picture on me that does not win anything? It's possible. Because <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> it is sad. But um, um, yeah, past it... lives just kind of hasn't picked up steam anywhere. Um, and like the holdovers only win will be WGA, but WGA obviously doesn't matter this year. So um, yeah, yeah, no, I think it's just, I think it's just anatomy. I think this one's. I think if there was a spoiler, I think it'd be holdovers, but I'd be a little shocked if it if it won, especially since Anatomy has directly beaten it in a cat in in an, in an award show. So, yeah, I'm not gonna say there's no credence to the idea that holdovers could win because I think that's just kind of silly and also like I think it could. I'd be a little surprised. I mean, if I'm being super honest, I'd be a little surprised. There is some credence to the fact that it did win ACE over poor things in comedy, but. That was surprising. He, that well, that was surprising. He, here, here, but like, it's Ace. It's not WGA. It's not PGA. It's not DGA. And if the holdovers were going to win, it would have needed to win something. Now, some people can say, "Well, it would have won Critics' Choice if Barbie wasn't adapted there." Listen, <laughs> that is some Carrie Mulligan would have won BAFTA. She were nominated shit. It doesn't matter that it would have happened if Barbie wasn't there. What matters is that Barbie was there and the holdovers lost. What matters is that the holdovers was not nominated for the Golden Globe. And if you're not nominated for the Golden Globe and you're going to win screenplay, you have to win a major precursor. And holdovers did not. There's also this thing. Anatomy of Falls, the only film here that has a Best Director nomination. And Justine Trier is nominated there. He's nominated here as well, I should say. And in a lot of these tight screenplay races, the, the, the one with the director nomination often wins out. If you're going to win screenplay without a director nomination and you are not sweeping, either your closest competitor has to also not be nominated for best director or you have to be winning Best Picture. The one exception to that is when the father beat Nomadland. And Nomadland was the only film in that category that was nominated for director. And it was a scenario where, well, Chloe Jaw is going to win director no matter what. So I'm just going to vote for Florian Zeller here uh, because she's already secured in her category. Nomadland also wasn't a very scoring play movie as well, could be argued. The Holdovers is not winning Best Picture. It is not Green Book. It is not Coda. And again, Anatomy Vault does have a director nomination. This also gives, I, there's also some credence to this idea. The Holdovers is already basically guaranteed at least one award in Supporting Actress. Anatomy, this is the one chance it's got to win. It's not nominated for International because it wasn't submitted. So it's this is the one chance that it's got, and for a film that was that clearly is loved, not just liked but loved by the Academy. It's one of only three films to have all of directing, writing, acting, and editing nominations. It, 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 it's winning. It's anatomy ball. Like not one hundred percent locked in, but like it, I, I I I I I think this is just probably happening. It's going to be in that in the fall. Uh, my preference here is past lives, but I I, I will take anatomy. Biggest has also an excellent script. So I'm I think back. my preference here is anatomy, I think. So I'm back. Are we still in the original screenplay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Do yeah. you have anatomy or do you have something else? I, I have anatomy. Um, I'm going to be kind of like, oh, wow. Um, my personal pick, though, would probably be me December. I think that's a really like it's a good script. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's yeah. a really good script. It's actually a pretty good lineup, to be honest. Maybe maybe Maestro is like okay. Well there I went I'm like, ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> I would put monster in here. Ooh, yeah. I put almost anything else, I think. You would put um elemental in there. <laughs> it's an almost. Almost. You would almost. <laughs> Golda. Almost. We're almost. Do I need to define the word almost? 
Uh, all right. We're up to me now for best adapted screenplay. American Fiction, written for the screen by Cord Jefferson. Barbie, written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Oppenheimer, written for the screen by Christopher Nolan. Four Things, screenplay by Tony McNamara. And The Zone of Interest, written by Jonathan Glazer. I think after everything, Critics' Choice, which wasn't that surprising, BAFTA, which was shocking, and USC, which even before BAFTA, I was like, I think this is probably going to win that. I honestly believe this category is kind of a lock for American fiction. Thank I personally do not care about the fact that it hasn't competed against Barbie yet. Because as we were talking about in production design, Barbie has lost a lot of momentum. And clearly the industry just does not take it as seriously as other films. It's like Top Gun Maverick. They just didn't take Top Gun all that seriously. The vibe I get from reading the anonymous and, ballots is they like the movie, but they don't like, but they don't care for it as like an Oscar movie. That's the vibe I get. They like it's a good movie. I think a lot so of people need thought to give that it about. Oscars? I think a lot of people thought that about Top Gun as well, which is why it only won one Oscar for sound. And this is going to win like one or two. <laughs> there isn't. There's maybe a little bit of credence to the idea that if. Oppenheimer just sweeps so hard it could take adapted. But that hasn't materialized anywhere. Critics' Choice wins nine awards. Adapted wasn't one of them. BAFTA wins seven awards. Adapted wasn't one of them. It loses USC. And I think it goes back to the thing I was talking about in original with Anatomy. Well, in the example I was giving for Anatomy was Christopher Nolan's already so far out front for director. I think they just kind of think well, he's secured in director. He's going to win already. I'm going to give my vote to somebody else in adapted screenplay. Because I feel comfortable that he's, he's just going to win in director. I think it's very interesting that it's not winning adapted screenplay, even though it is winning like eight offers. I think it is very just very interesting that adapted. Well, it, it happened with the English patient. It happened with the English patient back in the day. Yeah. Although Sling Blade is a much, much worse movie than um, uh, American Fiction. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a hot take. That that's one of my hot takes. Is uh, <laughs> Sling Blade is terrible, but um, that's a different content for a different day. Uh, American Fiction is going to win. I am yeah very confident in that. Uh, I think Poor Things would get my vote, and I I like the fact that the Zone of Interest is here, even if it's not like super dialogue heavy. I I do think it is a very interesting adaptation, and it actually does deserve the nomination. So I'm I'm actually glad it's here, but it is the one spoiler the one Oscars category I would not vote for it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's American Fiction. American Fiction. It was the BAFTA that just kind of really sealed the deal. Mm-hmm. It sounds so. It, it won its only nomination, which I think every other movie that has been in that position has also won. So, or someone said yeah. I don't know if it's actually true. I haven't looked into it, but someone has said that every other movie in its possession has won so uh, i think it's winning i think there's like a 0.5 percent chance that there's an upset if barbie does happen to win or i don't think often there's a chance if i'm being super honest but um i think they're on the same playing field barbie and oppenheimer we're like there's a like reason a, like a that someone could chance, but like but i'd be a little shocked that just doesn't happen against a sweep and again as i was saying if you're gonna win like one way you can win as a screen a screenplay as a non-director nominee is if you're a sweeper and american fiction certainly is that like i definitely get the argument that barbie has only competed in original like everywhere else i think it is winning wga uh that the whole number i think it's winning wga um <laughs> but no i'm winning um uh, american fiction because it's actually my least favorite nominee in this category i understand why people like it the intersection of the the drama and the satire didn't really work for me, unfortunately. Um, it's what it's what it's something I've heard from a lot of people, and it's something that I'm so not, I actually found like, I'm sympathetic to to a to a degree. Like I understand, yeah, I, I totally it. understand why people like it, but unfortunately, the screenplay was actually one of my least favorite elements, just because I don't find find that it blended it super well. Um, but I totally understand why people like it. Um, I think the satire is really really well done. I think if the satire was just like more of the movie, or if the drama. And the satire was like integrated more to get um 
in like a better way. Um, I think I would like it more, but uh, not the worst one in the category. I think it's better than Coda, so I think it's better than Coda. So. I mean, as I <laughs> said, I'm. Lot, so. I would take American <laughs> Fiction over a lot of recent adapted screenplay winners. Coda, as you said, yeah. Jojo Rabbit, uh, Imitation Game, Argo. Like, I think it's a it's a better film than those. And uh, also, I like the fact that someone in the Succession writers room is going to be an Academy Award winner in a few days. Oh yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I understand the appeal of it. There's just all the elements just kind of line up for me, unfortunately. So. My least favorite screenplay is unfortunately winning. <laughs> but my goal here is Poor Things. I think Poor Things is like... Well, now you know how I felt when Belfast won. <laughs> Belfast was also one of my least favorite screenplays of that category. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah, because yeah, no, Poor Things also my win. I think, I think, Bel- I think Belfast is... I, I, I think not Belfast. I think Poor Things is like by far and away like the best nominee in this category. I think it is so Well, good. you and I can agree on that at least. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so good. Um, I think it should be winning easily. But like... Is what it is. I wouldn't be back for everyone. Um, I know that script plays very divisive um, on film Twitter right now, but uh, I wouldn't be back I for think, that one. I wouldn't mind if Barbie won. Like, give Greta you know, Gerwig and Noah Baumbach an Oscar. That'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, give, give Greta Gerwig an Oscar. Let's do it. Yes. I mean, she should have won for Little Women, but yeah. Yes, that's just also true. <laughs> this is true. All right. Are you are you going American Fiction or are you? Yeah, I'm going American Fiction. I think that's. So, your preference too, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. We have an American fiction stand here, so you're also okay. an American fiction. It's just me, is it not? It's just me. Yeah, yeah. I, I do really like just the me. movie. To be, to be, I think it's, just, it's literally it's just like, me. It's like you and Tristan are like the lowest on it. Yeah, I think I think I like I mean, more than Tristan. I don't think I, Tristan I, like the I, I'm I'm sympathetic to some of the criticisms of the film, but I think it works really, really well, and I think it hits. Like I think I think the family drama works better than people give it credit for, even if I do mm-hmm. understand like where people are coming from. I mean, I think it worked, but I don't think it worked together with the satire. Again, I think I mean, it does better than people give it credit for. But no, I understand. I understand why people why people like it. Yeah, nothing anyway. worse. No, it's not going to be the worst winner in this category. Certainly not. Anyways, let's move on to another. To a, to a debatably the most locked category of the night. I think this is the most locked category. Actress, category. best supporting actress. Yeah, uh, the oh most Lord. locked category. Of the Emily Blunt, night. Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks in the color purple, America Ferrera in Barbie, Jodie Foster, Nyad, Dave I Joy Randolph in the holdovers. Uh, we're up to Jared for this one. <laughs> It's it's just I have to laugh. I have to laugh because it's so locked. I think like if anyone else gets it, someone from ABC did it purposely to um get ratings and get talk and whatnot. But <laughs> Divine less. Joy Randolph, the holdovers winning. Oh no, I'm mostly going with Daniel Brooks. I don't know about you guys. I would like Ferrera. My spoiler. <laughs> I saw someone random saying, I saw someone be like, what if America Ferrero's Oscar clip was like her scene in the car with Barbie the first time she meets her and like <laughs> not the monologue? Like they don't do the most obvious. <laughs> that would be funny. I don't think they're going to do that, but that would be funny. Um, I think uh, the funny thing is like, mainly you know what I was about, obviously, Vine Randall sweeping. A lot of the times, the, uh, the sweepers, they sweep in the balance too. I think the funny thing is number two is Jody Foster, which I kind of think uh, is really funny. It was here's my my statement. Um, best part of Nyad um, still should have anyone else. I I honestly would take in um, <laughs> Ro- Rosman Rosman Pike and Burn over her. This um, category in general is just really weak. Yeah, Jodie Foster two... and like America Fur really benefited from their ca- this category being yeah. weak as fuck. Yeah, because like, <laughs> like I would say Daniel Brooks more than America Fur, and I mean the lone color purple nominee. I mean Brooks I think did get in everywhere, and Ferrera didn't. So I um, think everyone okay. who aren't Emily Blunt and Divine Joy Randolph benefited. 
from this category. I, absolutely yeah, fun. I mean, he, he, I think Randolph and Brooks are like the only two people who I think actually kind of deserve to be here. The rest, like, I just, I, I don't really see it. It's, it's like last year, like I, I Carrie Cotton and Stephanie Shu, yes, amazing, talented, brilliant. You guys are, you guys are wonderful. The rest, eh, what are you guys doing here? Um, hey, how Cal Gray in the whale? She, she was the best part of that film. I'll give you that. It's a, not a very good film. It's a, yeah, I don't know if I nominate Emily Blunt. Maybe I need to rewatch the movie. I'm gonna. Just, I try and rewatch the movie this week. Um, it's hard because the movie is like three hours. So. Um, I like. I was saying for all the acting categories, um, I like to offer um, other ones I think should have been here. Um, the kind of, I would say maybe just personally the biggest snub because it kind of did get some awards, but I know a lot of people, including myself, are big Rachel McAdams and Are You There? It's Me, Margaret fans. Yeah, that would um, be she would be she would be a great nominee. That would have been a great nomination, and then of I'll course we're talking. And of course, you're talking to the All the Strangers fan. I will be mentioning the other actors, but I clarify Claire Foy, you know, All the yeah. Strangers. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would nominate Sakura Ando for Monster. I Will would do Bruce for Ferrari. She was fantastic in that movie. If so Lily Gladstone good. was in supporting, I would absolutely put her here. I think she'd probably win still, to be honest. I think it'd be a really interesting race. I I, I, I think Lily Gladstone would win Binder. if she were in supporting. Do we think she would I, just sweep? Do we think she would just do like a, the big sweep? I think she would Binder split Randolph? some critics awards with Randolph, maybe. But I think she would sweep the televised awards. Makes sense, yeah. Um, oh, who else was I going to shout out? I put Ralph and um, here. I, put Alice I think and compared here. to the, like, the rest of this lineup, I think Sandra Huller in the zone of interest would I'd be put her here. Much... She, could, she was a good nominee. She's not bad. It's... I, I... it's, it's... Taraji it was, it was inspired. Hansen it was in the color purple. I thought she inspired. kind of brought like yeah. Taraji B Henson would be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to look at my my list again because like there's a lot of supporting actors just kind of weak this year in general. Because I'm looking is, yeah. Julian Moore in May December. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm like the lone person who I actually don't love. Are you there, but it's Marco. I didn't love the Edge of Seventeen either. So I don't know what something about her movies just like don't click with me. They may need to rewatch it again, but I do you, not get the love. You know me. you're the best supporting actress race last from movies of last year's low when in my personal ten for supporting actors I have Viola Davis from the Hunger Games. The <laughs> 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 Song she was, look, she was great in that movie. She was. That's she why was I have her in there. <laughs> good no comment. Movie. I haven't seen it. <laughs> she was actually um, ironically very good in that movie. <laughs> she was having the time of her life. Yeah. In that role. Oh, another person who could have been here. I'm she's not in my personal lineup, but I think she's better than some of the people here. Um oh, I don't know how uh, it's Adele uh something something. Uh, I can't oh, pronounce her yes. last name oh, in passages. Yes. Oh she's very I've good in that. I heard she's very um good. Me and my friends are personal words. We actually nominated both Alice and Oliver and Rosman playing. <laughs> You know, that's that's high. Both. Yeah, we really liked them. It's only like four um, salt burn stands of us, but we all nominated them, which I thought was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a really interesting year for like supporting actress. Oh, I would have loved someone from Bottoms to be nominated, but that was obviously never happening. Just bottoms, just yeah. nominate bottoms. They could, they just could have gone movie. at the Globes. I think the Globes, that's on the Globes. They should have Oscars. nominated um Iowa Debery and comedy actress. She like gave that whole monologue in the parking lot. It was all improvised. Like if that doesn't scream award winning, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about about marrying the pastor and whatnot. Like, come on now, what are we doing, awards people? Yeah. <laughs> Alma Poisty was an inspired nomination, but still. <laughs> That was a very inspired on me. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really interesting year for supporting actress. Definitely one of the weaker years for supporting actress. Um, Yeah, my supporting actress personal list is actually pretty short. I would have loved, I I love that Penelope Cruz bag nomination. I think it's really inspired. Would have loved for her to get a uh, Oscar nomination in the end because it was like an amazing performance. I mean, obviously it's Penelope Cruz. All of her performances are great. 
but and I think a lot um, of people would shout out Juliette Binoche in the Taste of Things as well. I've seen a lot of people mention her. Uh, she was good. I don't remember the movie very much because I didn't really like it, but um, we were also very shocked to find out it's a supporting performance. Yes, it is a supporting performance. She disappears halfway. She disappears partway through the movie. She's not leaving that movie. Well, I'm I'm gonna watch it this week, hopefully before the ceremony. So I think you'll like it. I think you'll really like it, George. It's like a very good movie. I mean, we'll see. I did not like. Uh, I saw two of the director's other films. One of them I did not like. The other I thought was solid. So who knows? I think you'll like it more than me. I only give it a three out of five. So. All right, supporting actor. This is Jasmine's category here. Well, you really are just giving me all the easy categories. <laughs> Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction, Robert De Niro in Covers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling in Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo in Poor Things. Wow, y'all. I wonder who this is going to. Charles Melton by right in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I wonder who this is going to. What a shocker. The Sweeper. He swept all season, I think he's won. Every, oh, every precursor he can possibly win. Robert Downey Jr., congrats on your Oscar. This category has also been set up for quite a while, I think. <laughs> I'm going to be, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm going to be that guy that says I would personally pick Ryan Gosling for Barbie. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just of the belief that comedy is also really hard to do. And I always think of, like, the bedroom scene at the end of Barbie where he kind of does have to switch from this, like, over-the-top dramatic like Ken performance we've been seeing from him and also balance kind of existential dread and crisis that he is facing as a character. And he does that like really well in that scene specifically. And Robert Downey Jr., it's, it's just a, it feels like it's just a, Hey, you've worked in Hollywood. Um, and like you did, you're really good. As I I'm going to take the um, comedy is really hard. It was do. not Academy Awards friendly. You did do a turn in Oppenheimer. I'm gonna take that. Um, comedy is really hard to do. Line that you had, Jared. I'm gonna argue that for Mark Ruffalo and Poor <laughs> Things. I'm gonna argue that for Mark Ruffalo and Poor Things because <laughs> that's good too. Good. I really like his um, That like on a rewatch, he, like it's it's more shocking that this came from Mark Ruffalo of all people. Like, because, like, he, he plays, like, a very, like, kind of quiet person a lot of the time, like, a very, like, kind of, like, you know, he, he you know, kind of well-meaning, like, you know, down-to-earth guy, you know, that's one of, that's what he was nominated for with a first, first nomination, the kids are all right, uh, you could argue. It's a really, you know, he, he's that, he's not the type of actor who typically, like, goes, like, he's, like, plays, like, a giant <laughs> asshole, but with this film, <laughs> the, that character is is really fun and I like just the whole scene with the dads <laughs> it like it's insane and also his accent just like busy drinking heavily busy losing heavily <laughs> I love Robert De Niro who I think is basically just here for being Robert De Niro <laughs> yeah it's one of his best performances of, in a of, long time all though. of the like, he's incredible of all of the 20 actors nominated on the Nautilus Balance, he is the only actor of all 20 to not receive a single mention. Every it's other actor insane. has at least one mention. He's but so not good. One person has mentioned that they're voting for him. The poor guy. He's so good, though. <laughs> And then, America Ferrara has yeah. had someone say that they're voting for her. It's... One person has said it so far. <laughs> Yeah, and then Sterling K. Brown is there is a really really cool nom for, and that's just because I for really him, like the guy. I'm not crazy yeah. about that performance. <laughs> yeah, I'm also okay. not crazy about performance, but I'm glad that I'm glad I'm very glad that Sterling K. Brown has an Oscar nomination. But I'm also really. not crazy about the performance that's going to win. <laughs> In terms of other supporting actor performances, where do we begin? Um, shout Charles Melton, um, Charles Melton, Charles Melton. Charles Melton. Dominic Ben Chun passes passages. Chris Manzana and Air, which I know not people liked, but I thought he was good. Dominic okay. Sessa in the holdovers. Um, Jamie Bell and Paul Mescal and all the strangers. Rami Youssef and poor things. Like I don't know why no one. I mean because 
poor things just had a lot going on, but I thought his performance was also just like sweet little center of the well, movie. Dill gave him um, a shout out on the uh, film ball podcast that I did with him. So you know, you can oh, check nice. that out. Yeah. Um, and, if we're also going to talk about poor walk. things, we can mention Willem Dafoe. And then um, I would say Robert Pines and the Boy and the Heron, just like in terms of how he transformed his voice as the Heron, just completely yeah. I don't see unrecognizable. Him in the Boy and the Heron. I only saw the Japanese. Uh, and and that and that's I'm another thing that too. I'm not sure, like if if there ever is a voice acting category, how they would take into account English dubs. So I love the English dubs for Ghibli. I would not like them to award the English dubs for Ghibli. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I think it's a little I unfair. I don't know how how the rules would work there. I think you nominate. Thing. I I would hope the rule would be that you nominate like um, the original voice actor. That'd be like yeah. my personal opinion. Or maybe like, both, but like I don't know. I don't know because I know for Ghibli, a lot of the time they typically do get famous people, like very well known Hollywood actors, to do it. So I think it'd be a little unfair. Well, <laughs> yeah, they always do that. They got like yeah, um, so like. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Who did they get for? Uh, we, they got John Krasinski and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt for The Wind Rises, yeah, and I think I, Emily I think Blunt was, too. Yeah, I think, I think uh, the, was, an Oscar nominee this year, Emily Blunt. <laughs> yeah, I think they would just have to do a virtual voice actors. It would be really unfair. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think this was actually a really good year for supporting actor. Very, very good. I'm year. I'm also going to give a shout out to uh, Glenn Howerton and Blackberry. Uh, oh yeah, Jeremy Allen White and the Iron Claw. Very good. Uh, poor movie. Um, someone who has not uh gotten any that much attention from anyone this season, John Majaro. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh great actors. Uh, Milo Machado Grainer, as well. Mm. Uh, in Anatomy of a Fall, we can't forget the best boy. Uh oh yeah, we can't forget Messi. <laughs> we can't forget Messi. Best boy should be winning in my opinion. But you know what? Um. If we're gonna continue the anatomy train, we could talk about the hot lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun fact: I showed my friends, I showed my friends anatomy of a fall, and I was like, "Okay, by the way, you guys, people on the internet love this guy and think he's very hot." And they're like, "Really? What?" <laughs> <laughs> and the other disbelief. And I'm like, "You yeah, should have showed sure. the, you should have showed them the thirst traps." <laughs> you heard? Did you guys like it? Yeah, they liked it. Yeah, they they're liking they liked like all the movies I've been showing. All most of the best picture nominees except for Maestro, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're I mean, the Anatomy of the Fall is actually like it's it's that's not a hard movie for non film people to like, <laughs> despite the fact that it's long and like you know, foreign. But yeah, it's gonna be Robert Downey Jr. and I'm going to pretend that win is for uh, Tropic Thunder. <laughs> 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 all right we're gonna go slightly out of order here why because the more interest it's, it's it's a good thing to save the more interesting category for last and also i want to gloat about this category best actor <laughs> bradley cooper for maestro coleman domingo for rustin paul j Motti for the holdovers kelly murphy for oppenheimer jeffrey wright for american fiction i don't know if y'all can hear that that's me patting um, myself yeah. on the back. Okay, sorry, sorry, my, sorry, my my friend just clipped the chaser and pulled something. I'm shocked. Continue. <laughs> and look, I don't want to piss on the Paul Giamatti stands grave, but part of me has always believed that that Critics Choice one was fake. Like they deliberately gave it to him to shake up the race. And listen, if we were living in a world where Oppenheimer was not in the position that it is and was more like a power of the dog. There is a world where Killing Murphy could maybe lose. But the fact of the matter is, it is in the position that it's in. And ever since it was clear that it was just going to truly dominate, it came down to the, like, found, I, I, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that the film is going to win seven, eight Oscars. And Killing Murphy not being one of them. I don't care if Giamatti wins SAG. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I predicted Murphy to win SAG for that reason. And then he won, and I'm like, okay, I fucking told you all. And I just, I felt so vindicated um, because of that. I think, ultimately, in retrospect, it was kind of like a couple years ago when everyone said, oh yeah, Will Smith, he's going to win Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, SAG, all that stuff, but, but, but Cumberbatch is going to win the BAFTA, and that and he's going to make it a race. Of course, difference being, Giamatti, unlike Cumberbatch, actually won 
Golden Globe and what Critics' Choice. But a lot of people did say, like, yeah, Killian Murphy will win the BAFTA, but Paul G. Body's going to win SAG. And this is gonna, it's going to make this race interesting. But then Murphy just took SAG anyway, just like how Will Smith just took BAFTA anyway. And inevitably, I think this is just how it was always going to be. Like, as long as Oppenheimer was just going to dominate, Murphy was going to come along. And listen, for anyone who still maybe thinks that Giamatti is in it, <laughs> or that it's closer than we think it is, in the entire history of SAG, even before the time where BAFTA was before the Oscars, there have only been two people in Best Actor who've won both SAG and BAFTA and have lost. Russell Crowe for Beautiful Mind, which, of course, everyone knows why that happened. <laughs> and Daniel Day-Lewis for Gangs of New York, which, that was like a pe- the, the penis level surge. Uh, well, the penis was surging at the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the holdovers is not the penis. And Kelly Murphy did not assault somebody with a telephone. <laughs> so I think this is like it, it's as good as locked for Murphy at this point. I I think there's no way, there's no reason to not go with him. I think it's like almost guaranteed at this point. And I think as much as people said that like, but Giamatti feels good to vote for. I think Killian Murphy also feels good to vote for. This humble actor who, you know, he doesn't ask for awards. He doesn't really ask for the praise. He just comes in, puts in the work, and really cares about about the project, but has never really had an opportunity to have an awards run. This is his moment. It's a biopic. It's the best picture front runner. It's a monumental performance. And they they vote for him. And now he's gonna win. And it, it feels right with Murphy having worked with Nolan a lot. It, it it really does feel right that Murphy would be the one to win here, even over <laughs> Giamatti or, or even Bradley Cooper, who has like a thousand nominations at this point. <clears throat> so it's Murphy. Ooh. Yeah. I, I, it's going to be Murphy as well, though. <clears throat> Congrats yeah. on Paul Giamatti for putting up a fight. Um, he needed to win set. If he'd won set, he didn't really put up a fight, I don't think. Honestly. Okay. Well, he, he had a little bit of a race. Um, and then I have to shout out the cool fact of Colin B- Domingo, unfortunately, being the only the second of playing a gay man to get a best picture, not a uh, best actor nomination. Mm-hmm. But I'll take a second over a uh, continuing just one. Um, uh, other nominees. Um, this is in all caps. I should have been here. All caps with a thousand exclamation points. I'm everyone pitch it on their heads. Andrew, Andrew Scott. Scott, Andrew freaking Scott. I agree um, with you. Ha- yeah, Andrew Scott. Come on. Oh, so mad. <laughs> I would also pick Barry Keegan, Saltburn. That's totally just me. Um. David Johnson for Ry Lane, Franz Wazowski Wiz- for Passages. Um, yes. Jason Schwartzman for Asteroid City as well would be some of my other picks. I would give a shout out to Koji Yakusho in Perfect Days, also Teo Yu in Past Lives. Uh, Zach Efron from. Yes, Zach Efron, who uh, really Iron impressed Claw. me in the Iron Claw. I have. He doesn't normally. Um, wow me that much but in the iron claw he he was that that actually was a really good performance wait have you seen high school musical is he he wows the man uh, no. <laughs> I, I if i have seen it i don't remember it very well uh, um there's the uh lead actor in a fire i forget his name the lead actor in uh fallen leaves i also forget his name and uh, if you want to consider them both leads, the kids from Monster, there's a lot of uh, good ones here. I think I considered the other kids supporting in mine. But I think I, I put the main kid as lead. If I remember correctly. I think Paul Giamatti had won at least one award. It would be a little bit more of a race, but I mean, it's I kind mean, of unsurprising. I, that... To be honest, though, I, th- I think <laughs> even if Giamatti did win SAG, I think I'd probably still print Murphy. Because... Again, like how is he how how is how is Murphy not gonna win if Oppenheimer's winning all these other awards? It wouldn't really make any sense. Exactly. 
then again, you can say that about screenplay, and that's not happening. Yeah. But American fiction yeah. sweeping. Giamatti, even in that scenario, would not be. So I, I think it's going to be Murphy, though. Yeah. Um, and Murphy would be my preference in this lineup specifically, to be clear. Um, yeah, I would probably say that as well. But I, yeah. I think Murphy's my preference in this category. I I would uh, it would be different probably if I if Teo you were here or Koji Yakusho were here, but alas. All right, here we go. Here's the one you've all been waiting for. This damn category every year just keeps morbing us so hard. <laughs> but here we are, best actress. Annette Benning and Naya, Louis Gladstone, Kill the Fire Moon, Sandra Huller and Anatomy of Fall, Carrie Mulligan and Maestro, <laughs> Emma Stone, Poor Things. This is so a race wrote, this year. I wrote down the order. I had I initially had Jared taking this category, but Jasmine complains about getting all the easy ones, so I'm switching it up. Jasmine, you go. <laughs> I like the categories of race. We could have had another 2019 in our hands. <laughs> Remember how boring that year was in terms of just like everyone winning the exact so everyone winning? Same awards every every award show. There were yeah, okay winners, Hollywood. but like it got a little boring after a while. I like a good race. Um, that being said, this guy can go fuck himself. <laughs> this guy can go fuck himself. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think the hardest category to predict of like the entire night is. Yeah, I don't think it's as hard as visual effects. <laughs> anyway, go the category. Ahead. Yeah, this, this category is a nightmare. Um. When me and my friends did our predictions on Monday, I said Lily Gladstone. Um, I don't know if I'm still going Lily Gladstone. <laughs> the issue is all seven of us said Lily Gladstone, and so we all got very concerned. <laughs> but all seven yes. people went like Lily Gladstone. Yes. I don't know, because Lily Gladstone obviously wasn't a performance that everyone expected to win at SAG. It's not really like a performance that usually wins at SAG. Um... But I don't really think we can ignore the fact that Lily Gladstone did just completely miss BAFTA. I think that is a pretty yeah. big, it's a pretty big miss. It was fucking hard. I had Lily, I had Lily Gladstone for so long. I had Emma Stone, and I swore I was never going to change her. But and I went to with Lily Gladstone, and I think I'm back at Emma Stone. So that's where I'm at. I've switched back and forth the past, like, three days. How are y'all yeah, doing? This... Not good. This is a coin flip. <clears throat> That's okay. I'll, it's okay. I'll change like, by tomorrow. So don't hold this prediction to look. To listen, I'm aware that everyone's going to say like, but last year, but last year, but last year, last year was different. It's so different. Like, yeah, the precursor split is the same. There's other problems though. Lily Gladstone is not Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> and Killers <laughs> of Fire Moon is not everything ever all at once. Michelle Yeoh was an industry veteran. Who has been in the industry for like twenty five over twenty five years? I'm pretty sure. Like, I think there's also credence to the fact that Emma Stone's performance is more similar to Michelle Yeoh's performance than, and there's credence to the fact that Poor Things is stronger than Tar was last year. Now, I think there's there's a sentiment <laughs> amongst a lot of people. Again, it doesn't really matter whether you agree with this or not. There's a, a common sentiment amongst a lot of people that Lily Gladstone is a supported performance and she does not belong in this category. Uh, there have been a couple of voters anonymous that actually have directly said this. I think the latest IndieWire one did directly now, say this. And to be clear, this is something that also hurt against uh, that you could argue hurt Viola Davis last year. And last year, <laughs> it's late, 2020, <laughs> and. You know, you can say, but what about Olivia Coleman? I don't think that really caught on much with Olivia Coleman. You can argue it's racist because Lily Gladstone and Viola Davis are not white, and Olivia Coleman is. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but it, it's 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 the reality of the situation. I mean, Olivia Coleman also won against an actress who was the lone nominee for her movie, which really doesn't happen very often. Is also, and that's obviously not the case things. here. Yeah, there's a voter who very specifically said, and obviously not every voter things like this so there are obviously plenty of voters who are perfectly fine yeah with her placement but there was a voter who very specifically said that they did not consider her a lead performance and they would have voted for her in supporting I actually find the quote i mean the thing about it is, is that the baptimus is real 
for Lily Gladstone. You can't ignore that. And Killers of the Flower Moon, I mean, it did also miss adapted screenplay. Uh, and poor things supporting that would have been did different, not miss anything that it, that it absolutely needed to get nominated for. Yeah, there's yeah, this person says if she had been a supporting actress, then it would have been different because it is a supporting role and it's not a lead role. Is their exact quote, and for that reason, they voted for Emma Stone, and they voted for Emma Stone in the end. So, and Emma Stone would be my preference here. It should be, be but a lot of the people are between Emma and Lily, very specific. If they're between two people, it is between those two. Now, something that's interesting, so I love really, really weird as well. So Ryan Castleman uh, is the guy who does the preferential ballot experiments every year. He has this new mm -hmm. acting races experiment, and he used it for, for all the acting races this year. In that experiment, Lily Gladstone would win, but then he polled a bunch of uh, guild voters, and Emma Stone won pretty comfortably amongst those those voters, which is... I'm not saying that that's like real, 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 but it's um, it's the probably Oscar something that does that's have Lily Gladstone winning by like one percent. By the way, the dude was like the math to predict the Oscars. He's Lily Gladstone by one. It's 1%. really close. Yeah, it's <sighs> so close. It's one point three percent is the difference between them. That's the difference. That's how close it is. I don't think there's really a definitive argument for one over the other. Um, that would or enough that would like say like, okay, well, one of them has to like this one's clearly above the other one. I think the fact of the matter is, is that you could say, well, Emma already has one, and Lily does not. Voters don't think about that. Most voters don't think about that. I was just the kind of argument. I think something you could argue, though, is this is the one chance that Killers of the Fire Mode does have to win something. And Poor Things is probably going to win production design. It could also take makeup or costumes. That's another point you can make. Another point you can make as well is that Emma Stone uh, and Lily Gladstone clearly do not have any ill will towards each other. There was a story that came out where Lily Gladstone says, "Yeah, Emma and I are friends. Actually, we're really cool." I think Emma. I think Emma's gonna vote for Lily. <laughs> and there, okay, yeah, yeah. Emma, Emma clapped and smiled for Lily when she won at SAG. And I think there's Emma an argument you can make that a lot of people who were stuck between the two saw that, and in a way, it kind of gave them permission to vote for Lily Gladstone. In a similar way, the Kate Blanchett endorsing Michelle Yeoh could have given people permission to vote for Michelle Yeoh, or Steven Spielberg endorsing the Daniels last year could have given people permission to vote for the Daniels. So hard. I think the thing that the tipped people, me over really pick and choose when to use that because she hasn't. She's winning a second Oscar so soon after her. Like, I mean, they really pick and choose when to use that. Well, don't say I that mean, for if, Billie Eilish. If, she just won two years ago. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. No I think and from... like, look, no one, they didn't, the economy really didn't care when they gave the Francis McDormand for like third Oscar or whatever she's on now. And I think Emma Stone winning a second would be much better than that win. <laughs> and to be clear, <clears throat> I do not think that Lily Gladstone winning over Emma Stone would be a Francis McDormand winning over Kerry Mulligan for me because that's there's obviously significance there. <laughs> and Emma yeah, Stone think... is my preferred choice I'm to my preferred choice in this as well. I think though I'm going to say Lily Gladstone but in the thing that tipped me over an argument that Dan Bayer made on Next Best Picture a win for Lily feels like it would mean more for the world than a win for Emma do I agree with that not necessarily do I think that some voters would agree with that probably and I think the fact that SAG which it's not just Hollywood actors who vote for SAC. It's radio uh, hosts, weathermen, people who are news anchors and people correspondents starting out in for, acting. People starting out in acting. For like, yeah, people started out acting, but like also like not news correspondents for like 
organizations like CNN <laughs> or something to that effect. It's not just like the A list Hollywood stars. It's There's like, like enough of those people. So many actors went out to like vote my for friend Lily Gladstone. And he's not like a and Hollywood actor. It, it was also, in a way, telling for Parasite because Parasite. <laughs> one SAG ensemble under the same rules. Weathermen in the middle of country, in the middle of the country, voted for it over once upon a time in Hollywood. And I think that's what ultimately tipped me over the edge for Lily Gladstone, as if we- a weathermen in fucking Iowa are going to vote for Lily Gladstone. There's a good, there's good reason to believe the Academy would as well, especially if it like is like a quote unquote meaningful win. That being said. If Emma Stone does win, not only will I be over the moon for it, it will not surprise me. And it will make total sense. And I won't regret predicting Gladstone. Yeah, I mean, I, I might a little bit because I switched her at the last minute and Emma wins anyway. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep going back and forth. I would love Lily to win. Um, but personally. I don't, I'm, like, listen, not I'm also going to say this too, though. Shot, but I feel like we'll see Emma. My Gut here is again that way. My gut Fast is that we'll see Lily here again. But I think also the thing about it is though is that it, this is what my gut is telling me. And listen, last year, supporting actress, my gut was constantly telling me, George, Jamie Lee Curtis is gonna win. Jamie Lee Curtis is gonna win. It's not gonna be Carrie Condon. Jamie Lee Curtis is going to win the Oscar. And I ignored it. And I predicted Carrie Condon anyway. And then when Ariana the Bose got up there and just screamed, Jamie Lee Curtis! I was like, never again. Never again am I going against my gut. And I don't know what my gut's telling me to do. <laughs> and, 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 and this is what I said this year at Best Director. Best Director, my gut was telling me, Justine Tree is going to get a director nomination. Justine Tree is going to get in. It's like... It, I don't know who she's going to take out, but she's going to get in. She's going to take someone out and she's going to get in. Because because of the European Film Awards that, and I'm just like, fuck. Yeah, she's she's going to happen somewhere. She's She's going to happen. And so I was like, I have to do it. I, I have to predict her or else I'm going to go crazy. And guess, and guess what? I was right. So <laughs> I think I think that's the ultimate reason that I have to go with Lily. It's because my gut was right about Jamie Lee. My gut was right about Justine. It could very easily be right about Lily. Now, if Emma does win, then maybe my gut was uh, on shrooms or something. <laughs> but uh, there we okay, are. Emma will be here for the next like 50 year of a film she does. However many more she does with them. And I really hope they collaborate for a very long time. But she'll be here for the next week. We can campaign her for kinds of kindness as well. <laughs> Yay. Interestingly, I did have an idea for a movie starring. I do have an idea for a movie starring both Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone, but I'm not sure how exactly it would work. There is, I have to say that there's a there is a clip I saw online. Um, something that Cami put on. And they were interviewing Lily Gladstone, and I think it was like the game where it's like, this is an Oscar nominated movie, but the title's different. So like it was Poor Things, but it's like Girl Born Yesterday. Something like that. And then Lily Gladstone is like, oh, is this Barbie? Reveals this poor thing. And she's like, oh, you know, that makes sense. I was texting Emma Stone last night. See, that's what I was saying earlier. There needs to be. Lily did an interview where like, she and Emma are like, Barbie. yeah, Emma and I are best buddies, you know? You know, like SpongeBob and Patrick or some shit. I don't know why it just says SpongeBob and Patrick. But you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, if they she's see like, that, that, like, that gives Barbie people permission. That gives people permission is what I'm trying to get at mm-hmm. and listen i'm not going to be upset if lily wins even if emma is my favorite performance of the decade so far yeah I'm, oh I'm yeah not gonna, emma stone not, in terms of acting is is amazing i'm not gonna I'm be not... upset about it like i mean i, I like would, lily I would, I would love lily everyone wins. likes I lily think i think we're really good it's a better win than francis mcdormand so you know which one um which one no madland <laughs> well uh well, no, 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 yeah, no, I think probably no, better than all of them, to be to be honest. Maybe not Fargo, but yeah, Jared, <laughs> what are yeah. you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing Lily Gladstone. Oh, okay. so it's just me. Okay. Yeah. 
Hey, That's look. Okay, I'll, I'm I'll not... switch in like five minutes. Okay. Well, either way, one of us could be right. <laughs> no, if we all go Lily Gladstone, then one of us could be right. Um, yeah, this category is real hard. I don't think we'll see Emma Stone back here. Dude, I think Emma Stone, regardless, will win a second Oscar at some point. It won't be as good as Poor Things, though, if she doesn't. No, 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 no. Like, Poor Things, obviously, is, like, career-defining. And And that's another thing, too. Like, if Lily Gladstone was in supporting, this would be easy. (laughs) This would be so easy. Emma would just win. I don't know how fast we'll see Lily Gladstone here again, but I would love it. Who who would even be number two if Lily Gladstone wasn't here? Let's be real. Uh, Sandra Hula. Actually, no. Cherry Roll again. (laughs) <laughs> no, it would be Sandra Hiller. No, because... Sa- Sandra Hiller is. So Sandra Hiller is uh, third, and Annette Bening is four, and Karen Mullins is five. I don't, yeah, I think Sandra Hiller is pretty firmly number three. That performance very firmly is in three, also but a very loved. Dist- a very distant third, in my opinion. Well, I think she's a very firm number three. Like I, like I don't, like I don't see any reason to put Annette Bening or Carrie Mulligan ahead of her. No, I think Carrie Mulligan. Unfortunately. I mean, maybe, <laughs> but she also isn't a Best Picture nominee, and, and that Benning is not, so... No, that's a lot of fucking books. And Gary Mulgan was nominated everywhere, unlike and that Benning, but again, yeah, un- but also it's unlike it's Sandra Huller and unlike Lily Gladstone, so I don't know. Who, who, who fucking knows? There's a fucking, there's a fucking lot of love. Oh, there's some odd reasons. Anyway. Um, if we're going to talk about actors who could be here... I'm going to say Natalie Portman for May December as one of my shout outs here. Uh, Tayana Taylor for 1001, Greta Lee for Past mm-hmm. Lives. Um, I, oh, I would say Fan, Fan, Fantasia Barino for Color Purple. Margaret Robbie. I'll say Al- Alma Poisty for Fawn Leaves. I really like um, the lead actress of The Teacher of Flowers. I thought she was very good. Oh, she's, yeah, she's great. I think I'm more yeah. upset. I thought Margot Robbie missed an actor from like a girl missed in director because Margot Robbie missed she missed for that yeah. she missed for a fucking that Betty, <laughs> which is the upsetting part. Which, to be clear, I wouldn't have Margot in, but not for that Benning. I would I would put Greta Lee instead. <laughs> right, Anyone's better than I think. It is. Yeah, which so I, I, mean, I think if Gladstone sex. wasn't here, I actually do think there's a case for Greta Lee to take the fifth the fifth spot, which. That would that would make me happy. Uh, Rachel Sennett for Bottoms. Iowa Debra for Bottoms. Billy Garner for the Royal Hotel. Yeah, um, for there's how to someone. Have there's someone else who I was thinking of. Um, Eliza Scanlon for the Starling Girl, which is a very good movie. We saw some. Oh yeah, she's very good. She's very good. She's in very that. good oh yes, I look, I really um, like Ariel Bayer and How to Build the Pipeline. Also a very good movie. Well, they're non-binary, so I wouldn't. I don't know what to do there. Uh, well, it's also why I think we eventually we need to have gender neutral acting categories. I think that it's, is like I think that it's like not going to happen at the Oscars for a long time, but I think eventually they're going to have to get there. I think the Tonys will do it first, which is unsurprising. But I think the Tonys will do it soon. Oh, oh, but who was the other person I was thinking of? I, I had her name on the tip of my tongue and I forgot it. The lead actress from Are You There, Tom? No, not her. She's good, but she, but not her. Uh, there's lead actress in Totem is very good. That's everyone from my list. So, the goodness of the next two categories are they are locked. More locked than locked. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we could just move on to those. Best director. We're up to Jared here. Uh, Jonathan mm-hmm. Glazer for The Zone of Interest, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese for Killers of Flower Moon, and Justine Trier for Anatomy of a Fall. I'm going to go with the man of the hour, every fanboy's favorite director, Mr. Christopher Nolan for mm-hmm. the summer blockbuster Oppenheimer. What a sh- Oh my god, what a shock. What a <laughs> shock, wow. What a shock, I never could have predicted this, Jared. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I do think bold choices in my prediction. So. <laughs> bold choice there. I do think if there is any film that Nolan deserves to win for, it probably is this. It feels no that being is, said, like no one can shut up with him not having. If I had a ballot, I would vote for Jonathan Glazer. <sighs> uh, I think Yorgos Lanthimos is my pick too. 
I I would say your ghost as well. He he has a lot to do, and he and he does it flawlessly. <laughs> and I do think if Nolan specific creative vision, I do I think, think if it's... Nolan was not here, Alanthimos would win. Um, a lot of people, I, I think there were a lot of people saying, yeah, Scorsese would win. But I no, think Lanthimos no, has the. I think, I mean, well, Killers miss screenplay, so. Uh, no, I think it would be Lanthimos because I think Lanthimos fits the recent director winners better than Scorsese does for the specific film. Of course, uh, of course, of course Scorsese. He, he's, just, he's just chilling with these people, you know, nomination. He's just chilling. I think at this point, he just doesn't care. It's like he doesn't really no. care about. Uh, awards he, it's just that like whenever he he, he has an one, oscar he's one of two directors who whenever they make an oscar bait film they're just always in it's him and it's and it's spielberg those are the two every time they make an oscar bait film they're in i know well, i would like him to win i know i would with guys preferably would be nice. i mean yeah it would be nice um i don't know if it will happen Not that now. i don't love him the the departed but you know. it's it's good but it's I not a taxi driver it's tournament. not good fellas it's not it's not even close to the flower moon to be perfectly honest like, i don't know if i would have awarded him for the departed specifically from from his filmography but i'm glad he has an oscar regardless but i think we'll win one one more before i say i hope so um he's 81 <laughs> square says he for killers of the flower moon is the oldest best director nominee ever damn yeah it's- He's, he's like, I mean, he he's the same age as as a uh, Biden, to be clear. So, oh. um, yeah. He just kind of chills with these nominations now. He he doesn't really. Yeah, I don't think he really cares. He's just he's either. just the type of guy who's like, I have to do this. I have to make. I have to keep making movies, no matter how old I get. And he's an essential filmmaker, like. We have to be. We have. We, we are very. I would hope we're all very thankful that he is, that he is around, to uh, to give us these films. Okay, we didn't <laughs> reward him for for his like Jesus yeah. movie. That that being said, uh, eighty no minute one Jesus is, movie. Go, I mean, that being said, everyone this year is very eager to award Christopher Nolan, understandably so. <clears throat> and even if it's not Nolan, like it would probably be Lanthimos, and even then, I would. I would vote for Jonathan Glazer. So, but this is one of the best best director lineups we've ever had. Like, really, you can't go wrong with any of these picks. The Nolan fanboys can shut up now. I mean, they won't shut up, but now they can shut up. Well, well, now, well, now you have to ask yourself who's the next film bro director that nobody will shut up about until they win an Oscar. Zack Snyder. Well, that's never happening. <laughs> I just don't know, but now the, all the all the Dolan family's gonna shut up because he's about to have uh, two Oscars. So they all shut up. I, I think the honestly, next the next movie. the next like film bro director that people will want is Fincher. Like that might oh, be the yeah, next one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> I can totally see that. <laughs> and Zack Snyder. <laughs> really, really Zack Snyder will never win an Oscar. Stop. He won't, but Stop he, it, fanboys. He, he, he won't, but the fanboys are never going to shut up about it. <laughs> All right, well, here we are. Best picture. How fitting of me that I fix the order myself so that I could make it best picture. Uh, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of Fire, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. It's Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Is it? Uh, yes. Actually, no. It's going to be uh, left behind to the rise of the Antichrist. I write it. If everyone writes in all the strangers, we could do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is no. This is this is locked. Yeah, it's it's it even easier than everywhere. everything everywhere last year. It's one literally. Yeah, um, I'm I'm with you, Jasmine. In terms of like, I would love to. Live in a year where there's more for race. Um, You're gonna take it back. I hope we get one next year. I really do. I I really hope we get one next year. I want like the Apprentice versus Doom Part Two or something like that. (laughs) So like here's here's my question to kind of tickle the ivories or whatever. Um, Do you think there's just too many precursors 
and once we know that like okay Oppenheimer has won every single best picture from Golden Globes to SAG to I don't know whatever then that's what helps us get more confident and more like okay so we know it's Oppenheimer do you think maybe like it should, there just needs to be less precursors or not no, necessarily the sweeps, sweeps this wrong or don't happen over they don't happen maybe usually. just yeah maybe yeah because it is but just this year and last year like two. remember 19 like the 1971st well year. nomadland also but not to say but my, the, well that's covid we don't really count that, so they don't really count that i mean still sweep is a sweep yeah but like the past know, like, years since... versus parasite it was a big it was like like parasite did not sweep <laughs> like i think the only like what's sad WGA, but it lost bat and like a lost BAFTA. It lost. I mean, like, I mean, Golden Globe wasn't eligible for most of the ones, but like not um, until they change. There the are t- there, like there are t- there are typically races. It's just these two happen to be massive, massive sweeps. Yeah, so I and I don't think we're going to get a massive sweep next year. Or at least I hope. I don't, don't want a massive sweep next year. I want a fucking race. I love that these two movies are winning. That's just in terms of the conversation that we have. There's only so many thoughts we can all have. About now, I do want to entertain the question. Oh. If it wasn't going to be Oppenheimer, what What's do you think two? would do it? I was, I was going to ask. Two? A distant, the distant two? Well, what would win if it wasn't here? Um, oh, I, wonder, I wonder if it could be Barbie, just because those I don't were think the two popular movies of the year. I think oh, that's what's helping Oppenheimer if I, not, I mean that narrative the narrative of them both being the top two didn't manifest to begin with so i don't know okay. I don't, barbie i just don't think has enough momentum i think it's lost a lot it does not, like, no. momentum, i think it's clear from just the way that it's played out in the industry that like i got know they like they clearly like the movie but in terms of like giving it awards i think they're a little less eager to give it awards like the people who are like oh it's good but does it really need an oscar so probably so probably like either killers or holdovers right like i guess it'd be like holdovers mm-hmm. depends on also what else like wins awards as well obviously could it be poor things i know like when their views first came out they're like oh this is it so maybe poor things because i i even had that in my number one for a little while like early early on the season so here's my take on this i think it could have been American Fiction or Anatomy of the Fall because they're winning screenplay. Oh, interesting. Uh, American Fiction has the tip People's Choice. Anatomy of the Fall has the Palm Door. You know, it, it depends. Like, if Murphy's not there, could Wright win over Giamatti? Um, Anatomy wouldn't if if Oppenheimer were there, could Anatomy win editing? Or could Trie even win director? Well, I think Poor Things would probably win that. But like, could Anatomy have a package of like picture, screenplay, editing? I think that's something you could you would you would have to entertain. So I think it, it could have been one of those two. Or Poor Things. I think that would probably be the race. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, and whatever's two is like the most distant two, like physically possible. Now let's rank them. Oh, I love, I love uh, ranking. I actually, I actually have not ranked them yet. Hold on. Um, let me pull up my list. Hold on, I actually haven't ranked these yet. Hold on. And we can do a quick preferential list. ballot between the three of us. Um, I have not seen some of interest. I am. We'll be fixing that the Friday beforehand. Um. Is it cool if I go now? I'll just yeah, go ahead. So it's controversial. Uh, my last place is controversial. I'm sorry. That's oh, just I think my I know. Oh, I know. I know what your last place is. Um, last but place. <laughs> uh, George, you're you're such a cool friend. Um, don't get mad at me. Um, you, okay, I mean, buddy. like you said, it's just such a cool thing. But my last place is Anami of a Fall. Um, it's okay to yeah. be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, that was love... me earlier tonight. <laughs> Um, yeah, so moving past that, um, my strat eight, and then like everything else is bangers. Like, 
I have Killers of Flower Moon next, but that's still such a good movie. Um, then Past Lives, um, The Holdovers, Oppenheimer, American Fiction, Barbie, and then one is Poor Thing. My number 10, like everyone else's, is Maestro. <laughs> then uh, from here, it's an interesting ranking because I do like all these movies. I'd say American Fiction, then The Holdovers, then I'd put Barbie, then Killers, then Oppenheimer, then Anatomy of the Fall. And then past lives and poor things, and then of course my number one is the zone of interest. Oh, nice. I need, I need, I need to rewatch some of these movies. Um, roughly right now, so my number ten, like everyone else, is Maestro. Uh, did not like that movie. Um, don't know why it has a screenplay nomination at all. I wish I understood why. I think it's like one of the weakest aspects of the whole movie is the screenplay. Um, then my number nine is American Fiction. It is unfortunately it's not a movie that I clicked with as much as everyone else. I understand why people like it, but it didn't work for me, unfortunately. Um, my eight is also a controversial one for film Twitter, even though everything up from here I think is like an eight or higher. Um, but my number eight is Half Lives, which I also did not love as much as like the rest of film Twitter. I wish I did. I would have loved to. Um, I think it's still an eight for me. I think. Yeah, it's still an eight for me. I did not emotionally connect to past lives with the way that everyone else did. Um, I think everyone being here and above is like my like top 20, I think, or something like that. Like, yeah, everything from here and above is in like my top 20 of the year. Um, then it's Anatomy of the Fall. Fantastic movie. Great movie. Yeah. France made the biggest mistake not submitting this. Uh, Holdovers, uh, also really good. Uh, Zone of Interest, um, very good. Like one of like the best movies of like the 2020s. It is so good. And I'm hoping it gets a Criterion because I would really, really, really count on it. Um, Kills with Water Moon, really good. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it at like my number six spot on a rewatch. That might go down to me a little bit. Uh, then four things, then Oppenheimer, and then my number one of on the list is actually Barbie, which is just it's my highest ranked one of all. But that nice. um, I think poor things could I think poor things is gonna overtake Oppenheimer. I think that's gonna go up. I just need to rewatch it when it's on Disney Plus. Yes, I think because really, tomorrow, yeah, which is a, just a really odd sentence to say. <laughs> I love watching it on Disney+. We love Plus. it. I'm going to do a double feature of all the strangers and poor things on Disney+, Plus and just to get the, <laughs> the irate overload. Oh, I love it so much. I love that Disney+, Plus gets all this, like, Hulu shit. I think it's so funny. <laughs> when are we making Bella Baxter a uh, Disney princess? That might be my real question. Yeah. She already is. She already <laughs> is. It's an honorary <laughs> Disney princess. Honorary Disney princess. We're going to make it happen. All right. Well, yeah. Overall, I think this is a very, very strong year for Best Picture. It's a yeah. very, very good year. And I have a feeling this year might not be as strong. And but... I really liked last year's too. So yeah, I think we're gonna pay for it this year, and then I think this year we might have maybe like a less strong Best Picture than we have the past couple years. I I think it'll still be interesting though, because I think it'll be Battle of the Indies and yeah. kind of like all these like smaller oh Indies and Dune. And he's in Dune. And he's in Dune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in the movie and then Dune Part 2. Chilling. I know. Yeah, I'm, really I'm just going to say this a year out. The Apprentice, is, the Apprentice is winning Best Picture. I'm going to say that a year out. <laughs> I, either The Horizon or Alto Nights is probably getting nominated. I don't see film Twitter or like Arca liking either of those. I don't know. I would just be curious if Horizon gets nominated, like, because both Part 1 and Part 2 were coming out the same year. But I wonder oh. if that's just going to cause the voter chaos and maybe it won't get nominated. It seems like something that they would. If Part 1 and Part 2 were different years, then I could 100% oh. see nominated, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens because this year is obviously going to see the year where we really see the effects from, all, from the strikes last year. <laughs> I think movie theaters, I know a lot of people that work in movie theaters and they are feeling these strikes right now. Because 
yeah. nothing except Doom is out. I'm like, nothing. I don't think there's anything big out until like fucking like Furiosa. Well, yeah. that episode will come You've... in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But again, You've as, come... as I say. Let's go to Panda. Uh, Panda, gonna... and I think Ghost, Ghostbusters also oh, Ghostbusters up a little bit two, okay. two weeks. Yeah, it's but still... then it's nothing yeah, really in yeah. April except challenge. Maybe I'm gonna pull that into my narrative. Challengers will do very well because nothing's <laughs> gonna much? come out after <laughs> Ghostbusters, and <laughs> and then it's well, like three also. Yeah, it is. It is dead. Movie theaters. My friends that they are absolutely feeling the strikes right now. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. <laughs> that, that 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 was interesting. Uh, tune in for our Oscars coverage. Uh, next week. Um, when we talk about all the winners and all the all of our favorite memes of the ceremony and uh, and hopefully nothing as bad as Joey Coy at the Golden Globes, please, <laughs> please Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> uh, no, Jimmy, please get me. Please bring back John Stewart. Bring back John Stewart. What do we think is the category that could like be like the biggest surprise? I mean, I don't know where to start. Live action short. <laughs> other than Maybe the shorts. Maybe anime like, feature. Like other than the shorts, because the shorts no. Uh, uh, mm, visual effects. That's uh, true, visual effects. Maybe costumes. Um, Sandra Hoare. So many Adrian things Brody. feel so safe, but that's when I begin to feel really nervous. When so yeah. many things begin to feel safe. We'll see. But that's the end of that. And uh, of Ooh. course, leave a like, leave a subscription, leave a comment. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you all very soon. And uh, my zone of interest analysis will come soon. Peace out. All right. Bye. Bye.